calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, July 19th, 2021. Good evening, this is Steve DeCourcy, Select Board Chair. With me this evening are other board members, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves, uh, beginning with Mr. Diggins. Leonard Diggins. John Hurd. I'm Diane Muhammad. Eric Hill. And Steph. Adam Chaplin, Town Manager. <clears throat> Doug Heim, Town Council. Lauren Costa, Select Board Office. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in person in the Select Board Chambers and Town Hall. The meeting is also being simulcast online in interest of providing additional access and piloting hybrid meeting technologies. I have three additional notes before we begin the meeting. First, we have reduced the seating capacity for the Select Board Chamber to provide greater social distancing for persons who are required to be physically present or wish to observe the proceedings in person. We respectfully request that those in-person attendees waiting for their business item on the agenda wait in the larger, higher capacity Lions hearing room where this meeting will be simulcast. When it's your turn, or if you'd like to comment on an agenda item, please enter the chamber for your business and exit when you have finished. Furthermore, we respectfully ask that all non-vaccinated persons wear a mask while they are in town hall. Second, Board member Len Diggins is participating remotely this evening, consistent with remote participation guidelines for board members. As such, all business will be conducted by roll call vote, similar to the manner in which we would conduct our meetings via Zoom. Third, while this meeting is being conducted in person, it is also available via Zoom, is being recorded, and is being simultan simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Further, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to, to identify themselves. And during public hearings in the open forum period, I will call first upon persons physically present in town hall and then afford public comment or open forum to persons joining the meeting by Zoom. We will promote Zoom participants one at a time and we'll be able to see and hear them on screens set up in the select board chamber as Mr. Diggins and other members of the public observe online. Finally, both Zoom participants and people watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. With that, I note that other than Mr. Diggins, all members of the board are present, as well as town manager Adam Chapterlane, town council Douglas Hine, and board administrator tonight, Lauren Costa. Um, before I turn to the first item on the agenda, I'd like to ask the, the board and members of the public here um, if we could have a moment of silence for Kevin Feely. Kevin Feely was on the Board of Selectmen between 1964 and 1970. He was on the Board of Assessors between 1986 and 2021. Uh, he passed away on June 24th, 2021. So if we could have a moment of silence for Mr. Feely. Thank you. I'll now turn to the next First item on the agenda this evening, uh, which is item two on the agenda, an update on the housing production plan. Jenny Rate, Director of Planning and Community Development. Good evening, Ms. Rate. Good evening. Um, great to see everybody in person. Um, tonight, I'm just giving you an overview of where we're at with the housing production plan and hopefully answer any questions that you might have. So the housing production plan is a plan that positions the town to better meet local housing needs and demand, and in doing so, work towards the Chapter 40B 10% statutory minimum. Um, as you know, that is a requirement statewide under state law. The town's current subsidized housing inventory, which is monitored by my department, is at 5.66%. So we're just shy of, we're about, we're, depending upon the addition of new units, we're about 5.7%. But you don't add units to the inventory until you have a certificate of occupancy. Um, so you have to wait until that happens. The current five-year plan, which was adopted by the Redevelopment Board and Select Board and approved by DHCD in 2016, now expires in November. So that's why we're updating the plan. And the plan consists of three components, a housing needs and demand assessment, 
an analysis of, of development constraints, our capacity to meet those uh, issues and demands, and the opportunities that exist in town for new development, as well as preservation. And then it will be followed by an implementation plan that consists of outlining the housing goals and strategies that we can use to achieve them. Again, it's a five-year plan, so it has some level of ambition, but of course there's many practical uh, non-regulatory and regulatory items that go into the plan. The six-member housing plan implementation committee is charged with implementing the actions identified in the housing production plan. The implementation of the plan has been carried out mostly by my department, as well as the HPIC, as well as the ARB. The plan can help achieve multiple goals, including creating multiple pathways to opportunity through the creation and preservation of housing, intersecting with other planning efforts that my department and other departments are engaged in, including our transportation plan, which we will hear about later this evening, the net zero action plan, which you'll hear about at your next meeting, and the recently completed Fair Housing Action Plan, as well as serving as a springboard for the Arlington Affordable Housing Trust Fund Action Plan, and also to inform the eventual update of the Community Preservation Plan, which the CPA Committee uses when considering future CPA investments. Earlier this year, the HPIC and Department engaged in a process to hire a consultant to help craft the next five-year housing plan. We hired Barrett Planning Group with Horsley Witten Group, in April to begin working on that plan. The plan update has been funded by the uh, Arlington Community Development Block Grant Program. To date, we've established and begun implementing the community engagement strategy, as well as holding interviews, a forum in June, which was attended by 50 people. We learned about and discussed housing needs and challenges and opportunities for housing in Arlington. And the needs assessment that is now in progress is nearing completion. We've reached out to town boards and committees, local organizations, and multiple entities in Arlington to engage in the plan creation process, and we hope that more people will continue to engage. Attending the farmer's market weekly has been an interesting um, <laughs> opportunity to engage people, of course, while they're shopping and when they're not, um, and talking about their housing ideas and issues. Um, and then lastly, we've created something called a meeting in a box, which is available through my department to assist people who might want to host their own discussions about housing. So with that, I'll say, according to a recent report published by the Lincoln Institute for Land Policy, which is called Through the Roof, there are several guiding principles for local governments playing a role and taking action to address the housing affordability crisis. This includes the adoption of a formal local housing strategy with clearly articulated goals, policy tools, and metrics to measure success. I am proud that Arlington will be guided by this new plan and look forward to working with the board, of course, and others in the community to implement that plan and have it take shape. I would be glad to answer any of your questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I'll now turn it to the board for questions. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I move receipt of Ms. Raitt's report. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Or? Um, so um, the way you said interesting about the farmer's market makes me want to know more. And if there's anything you want to share about that, I'm all ears. The, the market? Oh, you said well, the, the, you were meeting folks at the farmer's market? Oh, at the, at the about? farmer's market. Yes, yeah. we've, we've uh, set up a table um, at the front of the farmer's market. And we basically have uh, flyers that outline sort of the plan process, um, what to anticipate from the plan, what we can achieve using housing plan, um, and then ways for people to engage. So currently, as a follow-up to the housing forum, we actually had a, an open Google form, which is still open online, for people to contribute to essentially a mini survey. Um, so anybody can do that. And then we're also just talking with people about housing issues. Um, a lot of people have had many, many questions and ideas to share. So it's really just an opportunity to engage with people, tell them about the housing plan, and then invite them to participate in further engagement opportunities. And try to get people to do the meeting in a box, by the way. So, if you know anybody. Yes, yes, thanks. Well, and Thank since I'm, I'm involved I mean, with the group as a liaison, I mean, with the Housing and Planning Implementation Committee you know, as a liaison from the Select Board, you know, most of my questions and concerns have been addressed there. So I will just pass it along to my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmut. Uh, thank you. I will second the motion by my colleague, Mr. Diggins. Um, and uh, no questions, but just appreciation for the good work of the committee to date and the good work that's going to happen and you know, the creativity of you and your staff in outreach. I love it. That's great. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you for doing this. You're uh, welcome. Just a quick answer is fine with me. Um, and something may preclude this sort of um, interface, but I'm just wondering where you're talking with groups. If there's anything officially sort of uh, working with the housing authority as well as um, have you or do you have plans, if it's appropriate, to get that information to the four different, the Monotomy Manor Association is just getting formed, but the other three also. Or is, are you precluded by that because it's separate? No, we have actively been trying to engage with the Housing Authority through board members as well as uh, tenant leaders um, through the associations. So we have distributed that information. Of course, if anybody is listening right now and still wants that information, we encourage you to contact our department directly. Um, but we have been actively trying to engage. And there's nothing that would uh, preclude them from participating, anybody, tenants or board members or anybody simply interested in public housing. Great, and I should have known you're already on top of it. Appreciate it. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. No questions, just as Mr. Helmuth said. Thank you for your continued efforts. Me and Mr. Helmuth just went through an election cycle, and when you go through an election <laughs> cycle, you learn what issues are really the hot button issues in the minds of Arlington residents, and housing was top of the list. So I am proud of the efforts that Arlington has done to be a leader in this field. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. And I just want to echo my uh, colleagues' comments and also commend you for the information that's on the website on, through the planning department. There's a number of links um, to the forum that was conducted on June 9th, the press release from May 11th, and uh, other um, activities coming up. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, okay. So on a motion to accept the report from Ms. Raid from made by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourse. Yes. yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, item number three, town clerk presentation regarding re-precincting requirements and proposed reduction in number of precincts. Julie Brazil, town clerk. Good evening, Ms. Brazil. Good evening. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine, are you able to run the slides? <laughs> I believe so. Okay. <clears throat> with me one second. All right, so um, good evening. I want to just quickly run through the basic process. Um, and then uh, we'll look at a few maps and uh, talk a little bit about the next steps. So um, the basic uh, requirement is that every 10 years we have to look at the population and look at the map and whether we need to redraw it. Uh, if the population has not changed substantially or has changed in proportion, you don't have to move the lines, but you have to go through the exercise of uh, studying the population numbers and if the map still works. Um, the select board approves the final map and then we submit it to the, uh, there's a review commission that the state sets up to approve precincting maps. Um, the draft maps that we got from the state are very preliminary. Um, the numbers are uh, estimates only, but it gives us a starting place. Um, the state does think that a lot of our precincts would have to move. Um, so uh, it's worth taking the time this summer to, to do a little bit of our homework. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm envisioning that happening. Um, when a precinct line moves, even just over by a block, all of the town meeting members in that precinct have to run again and it's, uh, it's, th this is sort of set up in state law where uh, everybody goes on the ballot. The top four vote getters are seated for the three year seats and then the next four for the two year seats and on down. Um, this may sound familiar because town meeting passed home rule legislation at the special town meeting last year for all of our, if, assuming it's approved, all of our town meeting elections will follow a similar model in a, any given year, anybody who wants to run for town meeting will get on the ballot and will 
do the vote order thing and we'll seat the four-year seats first. And if there are vacancies for two-year or one-year, continue filling them that way. So there won't be separate races um, for town meeting, which will be less confusing for everyone. Um, so, and so we'll all be getting used to that basic model. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the requirements for actually drawing the precincts. Um, they're fairly standard, they're fairly straightforward, uh, spelled out clearly um, in the law. Um, the Secretary of State's office will help us um, tweak our maps and, and lines and, and experiment with what happens um, as we shift things around. Um, and I think it's important to, to look at some variations. Things we should consider are um, where, are, where their a line change could affect a community of interest um, and whether that has a, a negative impact, which we would not want to do. Uh, we can project forward where we think we might have polling locations. Um, you know, in a couple of years, we might be able to use the high school as a polling location. And so uh, the map we draw can take that into account if we think that that's a likelihood. And then we would want to flag residential development that we think is likely to happen over the next 10 years and keep those precincts at the lower end of the population range so that um, as the growth happens, they don't become sort of wildly out of balance with the rest of the precincts. Uh, so uh, I won't read everything um, on the slide. Um, oh, so yeah, the, let's, yeah, let's just look quickly at the requirement slide. Um, but it's, it's pretty straightforward. The state caps it at 4,000 residents um, and then asks that they be fairly compact geographically um, and that we consider um, all, you know, sort of all of the basics around elections. All right, so then let's move on to some statistics. Um, elections are, uh, they're fun, they're fascinating, um, hopefully engaging for lots of people. That's, that's what we all want. Um, and they're, of course, evolving as Massachusetts considers changing its laws after we learned um, a lot from going through the experience of holding big elections during a pandemic. So we don't know what the new rules for elections are going to be, and um, that makes it a little tricky to plan, but at this point, it looks like we should be planning for all three possible modes of voting in person at the polls on election day, in person early voting at town hall, which will probably be available as, a, as an option for even local town elections going forward, and then um, vote by mail. Um, and of course, the, the details uh, for each of those kind of matter, but we won't know for a bit. We have right now more precincts than are required under the law. Um, and so that creates some additional costs in terms of um, actual costs, paying workers, and then just the logistics and the complexities of having so many precincts. And since um, all of our polling locations double or even triple up, we're really, we're really the, the, the effect for people voting is it's a much larger geographical area. Um, because they're not voting in their actual precinct, um, they're voting by sort of these larger geographical groupings. Um, and so, you know, where you actually vote becomes the thing that sticks in your head for a lot of people more than the actual number of their precinct. Um, I, I think, for me, one positive of the pandemic was it caused everyone to try some new stuff and to work really hard, and, you know, and, and we learned a lot doing the elections. Um, and I think we were very successful at having very high turnout during very awkward circumstances where you know, turnout in person was a concern and vote by mail um, was a very successful experiment. I'm cognizant of the fact that the federal government helped pay a lot of the overtime for staff, that that's probably not going to be true in the future. Vote by mail is fabulous but it's a lot of work for my staff. And we successfully <laughs> pulled that off by <laughs> borrowing the parking control officers because they didn't have any parking laws to enforce. So I, I'm kind of constantly reminded of, you know, we, we got 
we had this sort of this special circumstance. But going forward, I'm really trying to think about what's, what's sustainable um, and practical and efficient for running elections. Um, so um, with that in mind, let's dig in just a little more on elections. Um, the complexity of vote by mail does increase uh, when you have more precincts because you have to keep 21 different ballots um, organized and separate um, for both in-person early voting and vote by mail. The big impact on election day is that the state sets minimum standards for staffing each precinct. Um, but those minimums assume were, were written at a time, and it may change, when everybody came to vote in person for the most part. So we're sort of tied to um, staffing levels that may not be, uh, I may need the same bodies, but I'd like to be able to spread them out um, the way the voting patterns are actually telling us. Um, and there are other efficiencies that I, I wanna try. We can certainly uh, do more with volunteers. Um, we had some very successful volunteer time um, creating ballot kits for the, in March for the town election. Um, and, and, uh, and that, you know, again, that speeds things up um, for processing uh, the mailing. Uh, so, as we get to, uh, so yeah, we can go to uh, slide six now. And this is <laughs> the announcement that everyone's been waiting for. I think that we should take advantage of this opportunity uh, to look at the maps, and I think we should consider redrawing the map to give us 16 precincts instead of 21. It will make our polling locations and voter experience more uniform. Um, we'd have two, meaning we'd have two precincts in each of the eight polling locations that we currently use. Um, and if we have two precincts in a location, it becomes more feasible to consider having one warden supervise two precincts and then I can, you know, then I can repurpose election staffing somewhat and have more people actually handling the ballots. Um, so I mean, there's a bunch of stuff we can try, but I would, I would have that would be difficult if we had some precincts, uh, some wardens supervising two and some three precincts. Um, we have 21 tabulators now. However, the spare tabulators um, can be repurposed. Um, there's some some ways to do central tabulation that we could explore that would enable us to um, handle um, vote by mail ballots separately um, and not send all of them to the precincts. Um, and that again, um, could be uh, very helpful in being able to respond to very high turnout elections. I also wanna note that our total number of precincts is um, very out of line with what other towns do. Brookline, um, the largest town by population, um, has 16 precincts, and that's one more than they would be required to have. <clears throat> Plymouth has 15 precincts. Bill Ricca has the same 11 precincts that we would be required to have uh, now based on our population. And um, so uh, there are a number of towns that have one extra precinct over what they're required as a cushion so that they're not forced with having to add a precinct because their population tipped over a threshold, um, but we're not we're not we're not at that cushion stage. We've just decided we want a lot of small precincts. Um, so let's talk about the impact of the change. Um, a, I think it would make for a very exciting town election. Um, there would be there would be a lot of um, there would be a lot of interest. Uh, I do understand that it is stressful or town meeting members who would all have to run again if we are drawing all the lines over. Um, but uh, yeah, we have certainly have time to make uh, all the plans to support that kind of election and that kind of voter engagement. We would be able to set up systems where we can gather and publish candidate statements. I would want to make sure that we had um, town meeting vote histories uh, in an easily accessible format on the webpage and help people understand how to evaluate the voting records of uh, town meeting members. I do understand that this would also impact the number of people on the finance committee um, and that that could be um, a concern and certainly worth uh, the conversation about those impacts. Um, but again, I think the goal of 
being able to better respond to the next decades of um, changes in elections uh, it makes it worth uh, the conversation and, uh, and the discomfort that would come with the change like this. Um, just there are a lot of things that go into um, something like this. When you change precinct lines, you notify voters by mail <clears throat> that their precinct has changed. All of this is um, another way to uh, another way of, of you know voter engagement. Every time you communicate with voters about elections, it helps remind them that we have them. Um, and the town elections um, definitely <laughs> could use some attention some years. Um, so. Finally, let's talk about the timeline. Um, the preliminary numbers are, as I said, um, very preliminary. Uh, Adam Krausky says he's talked to GIS counterparts who think the numbers are uh, potentially pretty inflated. So we won't really know until um, August or September as we start getting uh, the, the more real numbers. However, there's plenty that we can do over the summer um, of course, we have to have the discussion about how many precincts we want, and I think it's prudent to, you know, have that conversation, um, not first, but definitely put, uh, make that decision so that we put more effort into perfecting um, the real map with the real number of precincts that we're aiming for. Because um, we definitely want to gather, be able to gather input. We know the maps, um, the, the 21 precinct map puts a line right through an apartment complex, which we would not do, but the computer generated uh, maps just sort of toss it out based on sheer numbers of people. Um, so we want to, we definitely want to look at all of those things um, and, and be getting input from people. Uh, of course, I stand ready to help in any way I can, working with Adam Kurowski um, on GIS and Kelly Linema in planning. The Election Modernization Committee has also indicated they would be willing to organize some virtual sessions just to help with gathering feedback as we get um, sort of uh, more realistic maps or sort of start looking at scenarios um, uh, to sort of where, where we're more comfortable with the lines. So I think we can, at this point, just go through um, the maps. Um, the, we have two versions of each map. Um, so we can start with just the 16 precincts map, just to see what that looks like. Um, and if, you know, if you sort of stop and think about where things are now, um, it represents a pretty big change. Um, more precincts are crossing Mass Ave, which we traditionally haven't done. Um, but it's sort of, you can sort of see um, dense and, uh, and less dense neighborhoods and, uh, and sort of start to wrap your head around it. Let's, for fun, look at the 21 precinct map with the lines, because um, that's the next most, the thing that people are curious about, which is if we stuck with 21 precincts, you know, how are the lines moving? Um, and the answer is um, they move a lot. Um, almost every precinct, um, the lines would move, and I understand it's a little difficult to see um, at this scale, but um, there, there are some major changes um, projected in sort of in population, and so I think there's a lot for us to look at. Um, so I want to certainly leave time for questions and be respectful of your uh, agenda tonight, um, so I'll stop. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Brazil. Before I turn it over to board members for questions or comments, I want to ask Attorney Heim um, for a little bit more information just in terms of timelines and, and the statutory requirements for the uh, reprecinct thing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Brazil. Uh, the couple things that I want to emphasize just for everybody's clarity, especially the, the public, is, is that this is a compulsory process and under ordinary times, what we would be required to do is by June 15th approve official description of precincts using the new census data, estimate the number of people in each precinct using the new census data, and provide a map showing new precincts. Now that might mean you keep exactly the same number of precincts and there's only slight changes to a few. 
it might mean something uh, more comprehensive uh, like the town clerk is discussing. But that would ordinarily be done by June 15th in a census year. Of course, the problem is, is that ordinarily we would get census data by January or February of this year. So since we haven't received that information, it's a factual impossibility to comply with Chapter 54, Section 6. Right now, there are two bills uh, being discussed in the legislature, both of which basically propose a similar idea to address this issue. And the Secretary of State is proposing a slightly, I don't want to say it's a different timeline. It may well be harmonious. But the bills are essentially proposing to do redistricting first and then re-precincting. Ordinarily, you would re-precinct first because your precincts are your basic building blocks of our local democracy. You have each precinct, and then they basically build districts based on those precincts. I'm not exactly sure how it would work for the redistricting to um, go before re-precincting, but the, uh, I'm sorry, do we, are we okay? We may have lost the Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, would you like me to hold off for a second? Are we having a problem with Zoom? or yeah. we're having a problem. I think we're having a broadband issue. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Breaking the sure. Yeah, yeah, if we can, we'll just pause for a minute until we get that back. That this is the laboratory we're talking, yes. we talked about earlier this year for um, hybrid meetings, yes. so. This happened when we were trying this earlier too, but it came back sooner than that. So we knocked off ACMI as well or just Zoom? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Recording in progress. Hi, this is Sean from ACLI. Sean, we're having a, a problem with Zoom, so we're, we're just trying to get that resolved before we restart. Oh, gotcha, yeah, I, I wasn't knocked out. I was just made host, it looks like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the most power get to your head. <laughs> we should be back on now when uh, Mr. Hurd okay. returns. Okay, we'll just wait for Mr. Hurd to come back. So again, um, we wanted to be back in the chambers. I think it's a good idea to be back in the chambers. Um, however, there's going to be glitches with technology. And uh, as we've said, with live TV, that's what happens sometimes. So we're back. And uh, Mr. Hurd is back. So with that, Attorney Heim, I don't know if you remember exactly where you were. but well, If you'll indulge me, Mr. Chair, would it be OK if I started over? Sure. Okay. So I just want to sort of set the table so that everybody is very clear, especially members of the public, on what's happening. Every 10 years, the town is required, it's not discretionary, to engage in quote unquote re-precincting based on uh, uh, census data that's developed basically every decade. That requirement is set forth in state law and it would ordinarily require the select board to vote on official descriptions of precincts using the most recent census data, an estimate of the number of people in each precinct using census data, and maps showing quote unquote, new precincts using census data. When I say new, I just mean that the, pre uh, the census data is very precise. It presents um, things down to a block level detail. So it's likely that some precincts are going to have some kind of redrawing involved based on changes in population. That doesn't mean that you have to change from 21 precincts. It doesn't mean that you have to keep 21 precincts. It's merely that you may end up reaffirming almost exactly the same thing we have now, or you may end up making small changes, big changes. It's ultimately up to the board. But it's supposed to be using census data that ordinarily we would receive in January or February, but because of the pandemic, we don't even have of it as of this juncture. So we can't factually comply with the law's June 15th deadline. There are two bills in the state legislature, both essentially proposed to do something that would be a little bit unorthodox. Ordinarily, we used the precinct data that's established by uh, cities and towns, and then take those precincts and build districts out of them. The legislature's current proposals would essentially establish new district lines before municipalities finalize the precinct lines, uh, precinct uh, areas, to my understanding. What's really important about that, aside from a larger sort of political discussion that I'm not qualified to get into, is that most of these bills are giving some sort of time frame for 
establishing precincts after that redistricting. And the census is currently reporting that their official data won't be available to the end of September. Because it's not available to the end of September, even though the legislature will likely move very, very swiftly to do any redistricting, if that's ultimately the route they go, that they choose to go on, we may not have a tremendous amount of time to have a more comprehensive discussion with the finalized census data before we have to start thinking about our nomination papers, which we, people typically start pulling in December and June, I mean January. So it's important to have these conversations now. All this data is highly preliminary, and we will have to use, we will be required to use the official census data as it is finalized and completed in September. The Secretary of State reports that he believes that we will have at least somewhat adequate data, I believe, sometime in the end of August, mid-August. Mid-August. Mm -hmm. um, a few other quick notes, uh, and this, again, is mostly just for the public's sort of edification. When this board ultimately approves whatever precinct description, descriptions and maps. It gets submitted to the uh, local election district review commission. And that commission will make sure that it essentially complies with the law that Ms. Brazil sort of outlined. And there are some very distinct things that they always look for. These have not traditionally been issues at all in Arlington. I'm not aware of this ever being a problem in Arlington. But for example, in other municipalities, they might be concerned they want to make sure that there's nothing called packing or fragmentation which is either concentration or dissolution of minority voter interests, uh, as Ms. Brazil sort of referenced. So uh, it's important for us to have this discussion now, because it may be that we have a very short time window once the official data is released. Uh, and at the same time, we can't make any final pronouncements until we have that final data. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Attorney Hyde. And, and just for, for clarification before I, I turn to my colleagues, uh, Ms. Brazil made the presentation tonight and she said no matter what we do, if we have 20, continue with 21 precincts, the precincts have to be redrawn. The 16 precinct proposal that you brought before us, you're not looking for a vote for us this evening no. to go to 16. <laughs> it's to receive that information and see do we want to have, start a process where we hear from the public um, about changing the number of precincts. I just wanted to clarify that in case it was, um, and for the public's benefit as well, that uh, this isn't a vote that we're gonna take tonight, but I think it's important, as Ms. Brazil and Attorney Heim said, to start a dialogue and think about what is before us over the next few months. So with that, I will uh, start with Mr. Hurd. Move receipt. Um, thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I do note on both maps, I'm no longer going to be in Precinct 18, so I look forward to maybe being in Mr. Helmuth's new home. Um, I look forward to the discussion and input with, you know, from residents and town meeting members about where they want to go and what direction with the precincts. You know, I do have concerns about the, you know, we have so much participation at all levels, including town meeting to see how that will impact town meeting members and the reactions we get from town meeting members um, and just you know, residents who like the way that their precinct is currently set up. So I look forward to the discussions and you know, we'll see where it goes from there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'd like to second Mr. Hurd's motion and um, I definitely, like everyone with the town clerk initiating um, this conversation, definitely have a community conversation um, also, uh, wildly aware, cognizant of the fact that um, our chairman, who also chairs the Long Range Planning Committee, um, there's been some, you know, really big numbers talked about in terms of what our budget could look like uh, in 2023, 2024, you know, putting aside the, um, I think it's AFRA, whatever they're calling the um, funding from uh, the federal what is it? ARPA. 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 Okay. Um, so, and I think I'm hearing this from um, the town clerk is that um, that when we do engage with the community or when the community engages with us, one of the things I'm, I'm always looking for um, sort of what the chair and, and the chair of uh, finance committee, Mr. Foskett, has said to we really need to look at, you know, what we do for business, what the cost of doing that business is, and so I really would be interested, and I think I heard from your remarks that um, sort of get a census, a feeling uh, from people 
not only the 16 versus 21 versus maybe 18 or whatever, um, I'd really like to um, get a sense of if we, at some point, I'm trying to think of cost savings. And the select board office is doing it. We're down a full-time person and a part-time person. So, um, Also get, gain people's interest in doing like Burlington, having it in one place, they have it at their high school, something that I've been hearing from people. Everybody wants to stay and vote where they vote. And, and I've also pointed out, well, the cost of voting um, has triple, gone triple fold between vote by mail, vote a week early. So I'd also like to um, put out there um, if we had three central polling locations throughout the town, whether regardless of the number of precincts that we have. But I'd really like to get a handle on um, sort of consolidating a lot of those costs because um, I know doing business during the pandemic was really slow. Um, <clears throat> people are just starting to come back online. Um, and I know the select board office is going through this exercise and it really has to, if we lead by example, it has to trickle over um, into other departments. So if you could also explore the one central or three central to east center heights. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Helmuth. Um, thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk, for your hard work on this. I know you've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, and you know, I'm cognizant that we get to do this every 10 years, that we have to try to predict the future for those next 10 years, and that is hard. Uh, I appreciate the thought that you've given to how elections may be changing, and yet we don't know how it's all gonna shake out you know, with vote by mail, and I'm not sure the legislature knows um, yet either. Uh, but it's important that we, we approach this, I think, with that kind of foresight in mind. Um, I also agree with my uh, colleague, Mr. Hurd, that this process, particularly if we do contemplate reducing the number of precincts, needs to be a public process with a lot of public input, a lot of listening to do. I'm open to it, but I have a lot of listening to do and a lot to learn about that. Um, and I'm, having said that, we don't have a lot of time to do this. And I think therein, there's the rub, you know, and, and um, I know that we can't establish that tonight, but I think for me, those, that's how I see the guardrails, you know, that, that we do this, we need to have a public process, but we don't have a lot of time to do it. Um, I do have a couple of questions about timeline. Sure. Uh, and I, I don't know if this is um, town council or the clerk, but with the bills in the legislature, did I understand that it's possible we might be granted time after October 31st to do this if, if they decide to do redistricting first? I don't, I mean, I, so the, the memos I've been getting spell out one process because that's what we're trying, what was set in place. Um, so I, I don't really know if we know. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Sure. To my understanding, one of the bills essentially gives us 30 days um, to uh, engage in the re-precinct thing after the redistricting is finalized. Mm -hmm. And then another one would offer a little bit more flexibility than that, essentially, is the best summary I can give of it. These things aren't finalized. I know that the legislature is taking this very seriously and they've gotten a lot of feedback and so it's, it's hard to say. Um, the only sort of deadlines that we, only dates that we can really be certain of is the date the U.S. Census is saying that they're gonna finalize their data. And, and the current deadline to submit our maps by October 30th. Um, and that could, I suppose, change if they write a new law. So, so that could be moved up even? I think what would happen is they would, it's more likely that if they pass a new law, they would be doing the redistricting first. Um, if that happens, um, things get a little more creative for us um, because of what's, what's, what's real uh, on the ground in terms of our population. Um, we might end up having to draw one of our precincts through um, you know, awkwardly in relationship. And so some people in precinct two would vote for um, one state rep and, and another, and, and I mean, it would be chaos. There would be two different ballots in precinct two um, and keeping track of that would be um, yeah. nightmarish. Not a fan of the concept. <laughs> I understand, thank you. Um, 
Finally, I, I just wanted to revisit the, the maps, and I think you know they're, they're loose online, which is a very good thing, but I think that most people in the public look at those maps and they thought we were going to vote on it tonight, you know, and they think yeah, it's, sure. it's final, and I think I'm hearing language like very preliminary. Um, could you speak to just how preliminary either map is and what, how, how much of that could be subject to change? We could change anything we want. The maps were computer generated. Um, it was, there was no thought put into um, you know, whether moving it over a block would um, make more sense because of a, a school line or, um, you know, like I said, one of the maps draws, it, draws a line right through an apartment complex, which we would never do. Um, so, and that's the problem when the, when the computer generates the, the census blocks, it, you know, it makes sense to the computer. Um, yeah. So. Got it. Great. Thank so, you. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, a uh, couple of short questions to you, Mr. Chair, uh, to uh, Mr. Clark. Uh, what's the history behind the 21 precincts? Um, would you like me to answer? If you have, I'll, I'll comment too, but if you have a... So, I've been trying to understand. Um, I can't read the microfiche at the library. The scan isn't legible. But I found the article. Um, I went through the... I went through the um, records of the minutes of 1970. Town meeting told the select board in October to definitely redraw the lines to rebalance the precincts. <clears throat> At the time, the population in each precinct was highly variable, and some precincts had 18 representatives in town meeting, and some precincts had 12 or 15, which um, the League of Women Voters <clears throat> thought was unfair. And so they'd been lobbying for a couple of years, and then the Supreme Court had passed a law saying, you know, one man, one vote. Somewhere between October and December, when the select board approved it, the maps, it went from let's redraw our 14 precincts to let's have 21 precincts. Hmm. And I wish I knew more about that conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't want to take a ton of time on a history lesson tonight, but it, I have a little bit more context on that. So it was a special town meeting, October 19th, 1970. Mm -hmm. They asked the select board to redraw the precincts. The, the select board, board of selectmen at that time, on December 21st, 1970, after hearing from the public, selected the 21 precincts. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, they recognized that FinCom would be increased from 15 to 21 members. Now, we have a member in the audience here tonight who was a town meeting member in 1970, Mr. Warden, who was in Precinct 6, I think, who was probably redistricted to Precinct 8 as a result of that exercise. Um, what it came down from was just, as you said, the one person, one vote. There was a Supreme Court decision that came down in 1968 that said local districts, cities or towns, have, their precincts have to have this roughly the same mm -hmm. or approximately the same population. That's what drove it. Yep. And it, so the town went from 14 to 21. Sorry, Mr. Diggins, um, I took some of your time there. So if you have another question. Oh, oh no, no, it's fine. I mean, it's all about the information. So any time you can answer a question is more willing for me just to jump right in. I mean, so, um, so did I hear you say uh, that, that there were some precincts that had 18 town meeting members? Mm -hmm. Interesting, you know, because my second question kind of hinges on that number 18. So, so I, uh, I, I hope the moderator isn't on because he might have a little bit of a heart attack, you know, but was there any consideration to, uh, instead of going up to 15 town meeting members, going to 18, so that instead of going down to 240 town meeting members, we go up to 288? It's, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that for a second. So. Mr. Diggins, you have to have, for town meeting members, the same number of town meeting members elected every year. And once you select the number of precincts, you come to a whole number that an equal number are elected each year. And that total number gets you as close to 240 as possible. And that's why if you do 16, 15 members, that gets you exactly to 240. If you did 17 precincts, it would get you to 255. But you have to have whole numbers. You can't have different numbers of town meeting members elected in each cycle. Right, so the number, so I, I thought the minimum was 240. I didn't realize that you had to get as close to 240. It, it's, as, it's the total elected membership is nearly to 240 as may be. I got you, I got you. Cause I mean, cause, cause 18 would give you six each, each cycle. So that's why I settled on 18 
Uh, but if the, the, the target is 240, I get it, and that explains why Brookline, which is bigger than us, we um, has six, um, um, 15 town meeting members, five per cycle. Got it, thank you. Okay, Those thank you, Mr. Diggins. And I just have a couple of comments. I appreciate the presentation this evening. I think this is something that we need to hear from the public, hear from town meeting members here. I think the finance committee might be the only committee that has one member per precinct, so that really does affect mm -hmm. affect them, like to hear from them. But I think it's it's we should continue to have this discussion and mm -hmm. um, and hear from the public, and we encourage town meeting members and member of the public <coughs> to get in touch with us. But I think for tonight's purposes, that's probably as much as we can uh, yes. we can do. And, and um, again, thank you for the time that you put into this, Ms. Brazil. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, okay, so on a, a motion to receive, that was made by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Um, is it, oh, do you have, oh, did you have a comment? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's members of the public uh, watching on Zoom asking if they should speak on this matter under open forum tonight or at a future meeting, uh, whatever the select board's yeah. preference might be. So if, if we go forward, well, we are going to have open forum tonight, okay, and as we go forward with this, we will have a public hearing, at least one public hearing, maybe more. So I think this is more of a receipt this evening, and if people want to say something during open forum, they can go right ahead. We weren't planning on having public comment during this agenda item. Okay. But again, open forum is coming up later in the, in the meeting this evening, and there will be an opportunity as we go forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Sorry thank you, Mr. Cashtelon. So with a motion to receive from Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Mr. Diggins. Yes. yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda, item number four, is a go outdoors request. Um, just pardon me, I've got to pull up my agenda. Laurie Bogdan, project coordinator, is she with us this evening? I guess if I could, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, just to throw it out there, if for some reason, you know, we had a miscommunication and nobody is here, if we could table this, since it's, they're looking for approval for November. Um, I know it's, they've included some pictures, but I don't want to revisit, go down another road again. Right. Um, okay. If there was more time Person's sensitive, here. maybe. Yeah, I, I think the, the ask is actually to exhibit it until November, not... Oh, until November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am here, by the way. Laura Bogdan. Is she here? Okay. Ms. Bogdan? Yes. Great. Good evening. Yeah, if Good you evening. could tell us a little bit about the request and the, uh, and the program. Uh, yes. Sorry, the connection is not that great on our end. Um, I'm Laurie Bogdan, and I am the project coordinator for the Go Outdoors Neighbors Project in town. Um, it started last year and artists have been participating by painting or decorating some regular interior doors from houses in and the objection. I mean, the, uh, the reason they're doing that is to get people to go outside, walk around, go to places they haven't normally seen and have something nice to look at. And I'm here tonight to ask if we can place a door in the center of town, which is on that small park, the Memorial Park, uh, near the fire station, but the opposite end far away from the Memorial, because we recognize that we need to respect that Memorial. Okay, and just, just for clarification, What's the time frame that you're looking for? Because we see that 
the, the, the end date, but what, what would be the time frame that you're looking to do this? Uh, well, that door is painted and ready to go. We'd love to install it uh, this coming Friday, and it would end at the end of November. Okay. All right. Um, with that, I will turn to the board for questions or comments. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, I move approval. Um, I'm wondering, Mr. Chair, if, if this needs to be have a specific start and end date on the motion. Yeah, I, I, I think I want to hear from other members, too, on the end date, yeah. because that seems like a very open-ended time period. Yeah. So um, certainly a, a start date would, would be fine, and we'll see what okay, yeah. comfortable yeah, so members for, are. I think you can do period. provisional now. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to, to the start date as requested, and then yeah, I'd like to hear board discussion as well about the end date. I think uh, I don't have a strong feeling about it either way. I, I do appreciate the initiative. I, I love the cleverness of the, of the concept in the title. Um, and I think that something intention getting and thought provoking is really what public art is about. So uh, I appreciate that impulse. Great. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, is, um, I'd like to ask Ms. Bogdan, um, do we have a, a picture of the door that's already been painted? Is that what we see in the materials you supplied? Um, do you see a picture of, I don't see what you're looking at, but the door has a guitar on it? Yes. And um, the actual door um, is, a, I wrote the dimensions in the proposal. Half of that guitar will be on the front and the other half will be on the rear. The reason we chose that particular door for that area is that we see that part of town um, as a gathering spot where people might play music during busking, um, there's also a couple of establishments that are musically oriented. There's a music store there, and we thought it would was a good placement for that particular door. Okay, thank you. Um, and I will uh, second Mr. Helmut's motion, and I'll put it out for um, the chair in my colleagues' discussion. Um, I would anticipate perhaps putting a, an end date of October 31st or the first Monday in November because when we have served at Veterans Day down there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people there and I'd hate to see somebody accidentally, you know, someone took the time, some artist, artist or artist and, you know, so um, I would propose an end date of, you know, perhaps October 31st and then that gives the DPW crew um, the time they need to get ready for, I think it's the first Monday, whatever the Monday is, but it, they have a couple of weeks uh, work beforehand, so. Okay. Um, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And, and Mr. Helmuth, will you accept that as a friendly, friendly amendment? amendment? Yes, yes, okay. it's very sensible too, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, uh, for the record, I think um, Veterans Day is on the 11th, uh, but maybe we celebrate something on the first Monday. Um, I'm all for it, you know, so I'm fine with um, the 31st or whatever, I mean, so um, it's, a, it's a great idea, clever, it, um, thank you. That's it, Mr. Think, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Hurd. Um, yeah, I'm happy to support the motion. I look forward to it. I was going to suggest September 30th, but I think the 31st is fine. The, the only reason I was going to say September 30th is because I feel like we've had two-month blocks of public art. But this is pretty non-invasive, <laughs> and you know, I, I think it, the idea is correct, and hopefully the weather will cooperate with us where we'll still want people outside in October. So I'm happy to support October 31st. And I do very much love the concept. Um, I always say I'd love to see more, um, more musical performances and out in Arlington Center. In, of course, as one of the people with the authority to push that, always forget to, you know, move forward with that. But maybe this will be a reminder that we have to uh, organize some more events in Arlington Center. So, look forward to seeing it every day as I walk to get my coffee. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And I, I also support the motion uh, as amended. And uh, thank you for bringing this forward to us. Um, so we have a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan for approval for the period from July 23rd through October 31st. Uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item five is a request for a hawker peddler selling Richie slush uh, and Joan Goodrich. I saw the name here. Okay, Andrew, okay. Hi, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Ms. Goodbridge. Um, yeah, if you could just tell us a little bit about the application, and um, we have your letter um, is, is, is seeking approval here. Can you hear me okay? Because there's a little choppy on my end. Yeah, oh, we can hear you. Okay. So my name is Anjoni Goodridge, and I'm at the request of the Arlington Health and Human Services. I'm petitioning and requesting um, that the select board please grant me permission to, as a Massachusetts hawker peddler, to um, operate a mobile uh, slushy uh, cart um, on the side there and um, on the corner of Mass Ave and Pleasant Street, as well as some other locations down um, by Spy Pond, as and on both sides of Spy Pond at the access roads. Um, the idea is to just rent a Richie slushy cart uh, about three or four days out of the summer, uh, weather permitting, to be able to sell Richie slushies, and um, that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll turn to the board, Mrs. Mahan. <clears throat> and uh, if I. Just could, just um, for the record, and I know um, we have redactions. If I could just ask Ms. Goodridge, what's, just what city or town do you live in? I live in Cambridge. Cambridge, okay. Um, but I have family that live in, in Arlington that have kids. <laughs> they, <laughs> those That's are the ties that bind. Those are the ties that bind. Um, um, and, and am I correct to understand you, you want the license, and, but you plan to operate three or four days a year? Is that what I heard? No, this, sorry, just three or four weekends in the summer. So that would be possibly July 25th, August 7th, and August 21st. Um, okay, I'd like to hear from my colleagues because I'm not really, not really getting a, a sense on this because I always try to think of you know what we currently have in town um, where you can get Richie slushes, which are about a dozen establishments, and um, and this may be something we want to start to do. But um, you know, once we open it up, um, we could see more requests like that. I don't know if this is something maybe working with uh, the economic development with the planning department. Um, to do a little more homework on this, um, but so I'd like to hear from my colleagues. I, I, okay. I could move a seat, but I, I don't know if anyone feels strongly about this either way. Okay, um, Mr. Hurd. Um, I'm happy to move approval. I think you know, certainly there are businesses in town that would that have the same products, but I think in the limited number of, of opportunities that Ms. Goodrich is going to be in town and the targeted nature of it, it seems like people that wouldn't otherwise be getting the slushes and then we'll see how it goes on a test basis. Um, so I wish you luck. <laughs> I think, I mean, we're at this point in the summer, I don't think anyone else would be asking for a similar request and if it works and people like it, then we can look at more applications. I was interested to learn what a hawker was, so yeah. now we know. Um, so I'll move approval, and I would just know, one of the locations, you know, I, I assume this is a mobile cart where you can walk around pretty easily, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, and I would just note that one of the proposed locations, which is Mass and Pleasant, is pretty busy, and it gets congested there during peak hours, say on Saturdays and Sundays. So it, just make sure that use your best judgment to make that you're not in the way and you're not in causing traffic concerns or safety concerns, because um, that's certainly something that I think would cause us to not want to approve such applications going forward. Yes, sir. And it would be on the side by the Unitarian Church on that side. 
not yep. on the side of the bank, sir. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Well, I have to say, I, I love the entrepreneurial spirit of this. I, mean, I understand my colleagues, um, uh, Ms. Mahan, um, concern. I mean, we have to think I mean, big picture, I meaning how I mean, this will apply I mean, in more situations than this. You know, but as most people know, I like trying things, I mean, and, and I, I like this idea. I mean, my question, though, is are you limited to the locations that you selected? Because I'm thinking Thorndike Deal, um, you could probably like sell out the cart you know, in, in 10 minutes because especially when you know people are there playing soccer and parents are watching kids play soccer and people come with their dogs to dog park so is that not an option for you so in talking to the director mr conley of the fields you have to be on the access road and given my nieces and nephews i was kind of thinking of them because when the ice cream truck goes away they're not fast enough to run after it so i just figured to be in a central location where especially younger kids. But that is a good idea, sir. I will put that on. Yeah, but it's not possible. I mean, if, if, because this field, you can't do that. You can't do it. So <clears> so, so um, it was just an idea. But um, here, you've, you've done your homework. I mean, so um, go for it. Good luck. I mean, uh, and I guess at this point, we're looking for a second. I'll be happy to get that second. OK, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. I'm happy to support this. OK, great. And just a, a question on hours for the, for the weekend. You said you, you'd like a, approval for weekends, but is there um, a time frame that, I don't know if you put that in an application or anything else that you sent to the board office. I'm just concerned about early starting time on a Sunday, for example. So it would be uh, from 12 p.m. until 6 p.m. And that's just a half an hour leeway for Richie Slushy to come and pick up. Okay, all right, so from 12 to 6. So. Um, yeah, with that, I, I will support this as well. Um, and if, if it's okay with uh, Mr. Hurd, if we can put those hours in for the, uh, for the 12 to 6 on the approval. So amended. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Hind. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Uh, Best thank of you, luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, the consent agenda is next. Item six through nine on our agenda tonight. Uh, item six, minutes of meetings, June 9th, 2021. Item seven, reappointments. Um, all terms to expire 630, 2024. Commission for Arts and Culture, Thomas Davison, Lydia Kennick Share, Human Resource Board, Sheila Keedy. Park and Recreation Commission, Sarah Carrier. Item eight, request for a contractor drain layer license, Arlington Asphalt, Eric Gomes. Item nine, request for a contractor drain layer license, Terra Landscape and Construction, Daniel Ribeiro. Uh, on the consent agenda, Mr. Helmuth. Move approval. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Any comments, no questions? Comments. Mr. Diggins, any comments or questions? No comments. Okay, none from me. So on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Um, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have public hearings to request to repair private ways. Item 10 is Elmhurst Road. Um, Alex, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to get the last name wrong. I don't know if Ms. Costa, if you know the uh, pronoun, Yura um, Okay, is, is he here time? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, if you can come up to the microphone and tell us about the request, and uh, then we Good can evening. take questions. Um, so the request is pretty straightforward. Um, I am uh, we purchased 73 Freeman Street um, in 2019 and uh, had renovated it and moved in um, uh, March of this year. And when we purchased it, one of the things that was striking was the condition of Elmhurst Road, um, which um, looks like it's been bombed. Um, and so when we moved in, I reached out uh, to 
uh, the town to ask sort of what the status of repairs was. I was told that the road was private and that the town did not, did not have any responsibility or plans to maintain it and that I did have sort of one option of petitioning my fellow butters um, and that there were some mechanisms in place that if we had two thirds consent, we could petition the town to get um, for, a, for a betterment. Um, I was told that there was no option to petition the town to take over uh, custody of said road. Um, and being a private road, I was kind of surprised there was no HOA or any other mechanism in place um, for, uh, for maintaining it. Um, I actually had lived a few blocks away, and so I sort of pulled some of the neighbors and asked them about the road, and I was told that apparently that's been the condition for it for the past 25 years at least. Um, and so I petitioned, I sent letters to um, the, the residents and uh, received two-thirds um, consent from a number of uh, enough residents to have uh, to submit a petition for approximately the two blocks from Mass Ave to Randolph Street. And so that's why we're here today. Um, happy to answer any questions the board has. Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, I'll turn to the board. Mr. Diggins. Uh, I will move the approval of the request. Thank no you. questions. Okay, um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I will second that, and um, I want to say to Mr. Yurak, Yurakimov, Yurakimov, is that how you say your name right? So I can. Yurakimov. Okay, close. Um, um, kudos to you on really in a very concise way <laughs> describing our betterment program with your first pass at it. So, thank um, and thank you for taking this on. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, happy to support it. Um, this is a question for Attorney Hyam, which I'm sure this has already been vetted, but so under the betterment law, we can essentially approve half a street or like approve only so much of a portion as they petition out the neighbors? That's correct. So yeah. the one of the purposes of the hearing is to discuss the, I'm sorry, may I, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. One of the purposes of the hearing is to basically talk about the advisability of doing the project and yep. to set boundaries. In fact, I think, if I remember correctly, there have been rare occasions where a betterment has basically been trimmed by the select board because uh, there was objection to some specific you know, yep. butter who didn't feel like it was necessary or whatever. So yeah, you, you can set the dimensions of the betterment uh, in, in this manner for this type of road. There might be some private ways it would be difficult to like excise some specific portion of it, yeah. but in this case, I think you can proceed. All right, thank you. Happy to support it. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, welcome to Arlington. Uh, I live on our private way, so uh, I know the feeling. <laughs> but uh, but uh, kudos to you not only for your articulate presentation, as my colleague mentioned, but also for organizing your neighbors. Uh, that speaks to your, uh, your skill and being a good neighbor, so I hope it goes well for you. It was certainly an adventure. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Hamill. And just w one point of clarification on the area that, that you're seeking to repair. Now, my understanding was one block in from Mass Ave to the end, or where, where yeah, is it? Yeah, I, I said Mass Ave for yeah. uh, So basically, my property, 73 Freeman Street, starts. Um, it looks like uh, the apartment, the condo complex, had paved from Mass Ave proper to their own driveway. Right. Um, so it's in fairly good condition there. And then the private that the disrepair starts basically there. Um, and then it goes all the way to the street, but uh, to school? Brooks. Brooks. Brooks, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. No, thank you for that clarification because we didn't see the condominium association yes. on the petition. Correct. And you've explained why they're not. So I, I support this as well. And, and uh, um, I also want to commend you for, for working with your neighbors because it's not easy to, to go out and follow the bylaw and, uh, and get this done. So. Um, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Diggins, seconded Mr. by Chair. Mrs. Mahan. Before I do that, Mr. Chapdelaine. There is a resident with oh. their hand raised. Yeah, I've done, I did this before too. This is a public hearing. So uh, if there are members of the public who wish to be heard on this, um, they're entitled to do so. Um, we have one person in the, in the chambers here tonight. So Ms. Cassell, if she would like to speak, um, what, you can come up and speak at the mic if you'd like on this issue, and then we'll go to whoever is um, wishing to participate remotely. Um, yes, my name is Lally Stoll, and I would just like to urge, you may already be planning to do this, that there would be um, speed bumps included here because there are lots and lots of children, 
especially on the side streets. And this has been one of the, one of the reasons for mixed opinions about this. So I would just advocate, I mean, he's right, the street is in terrible condition, um, but there is a huge problem of traffic which has escalated even in the last few months. People bending around Brooks Avenue and speeding down Elmhurst. Right. Um, and so we just really want to take into account the existence of these kids who play in the street and cars coming through the side streets onto Elmhurst. Right. So I would just strongly like to advocate for a series of speed bumps and even posted signs about when traffic can enter and exit at certain heavily trafficked times of day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'd like to ask either Attorney Hyman or Mr. Chapdelaine on that issue on traffic coming through this betterment um, situation, what the process would be. Uh, so I would, go ahead. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, we've, as a town, never allowed speed bumps from a snow plowing or snow removal point of view. So I would advise against um, the uh, installation of asphalt speed bumps. Should the abutters want to talk with the town about some type of removable speed bump that actually might be, is part of the larger plan that will be dis discussed later tonight, Connect Arlington, I think that's the type of thing we could engage with the abutters with, but the actual installation of permanent speed bumps, at least at this point, would run against or run a counter to our snow removal operations. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Chaplain. So I, I, I Attorney Hyde. One other piece, Mr. Chair. Um, so private way abutters can, as long as they comply with uh, street signage regulations, can place street signs. They can't change the flow of traffic or hours without um, a wider discussion with uh, town authorities, but for example, you could put, you know, children at play, slow signs and things of that nature, as long as they comply with, I want to say it's the M-U-T-C-D. Mm -hmm. um, so there's something else you could talk to the town engineer about if you wanted to uh, make it clear that, you know, there are children in this neighborhood. I, I think we all understand and appreciate that that's been a persistent right. concern in many streets. That has been tried. That's difficult to enforce. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think, and, and we'll notify the planning department as well, the transportation planner, but I think maybe that's, that's an avenue to go about. But I think you're absolutely right. Elmhurst Road, because it connects to Brooks, if it's in better condition, more people may want to use it. And that's, no question about yeah. that. Um, okay. All right. Thank you for that. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we can follow up and then work with you on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, and there's someone who wishes to be heard through Zoom. Her name is Pam Wilson. Pam Wilson, okay. Ms. Wilson, are you with us? Can you hear me? Oh, Wilson, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I don't know why I don't have an image up, but um, I also live on the road. I'm farther down. I'm not on the area, the two blocks that will be. Excuse me, just can you speak a little louder? We are having trouble hearing you. Uh, let me see if I can turn up the volume. Um, yeah, and, and if you can get a little closer to the mic, if possible. Um, can you hear this? That's better. Okay. I live on this street as well. I'm not on the two blocks that may be paid, but I want to say that to reinforce what the last speaker said, that there are many potholes, and at present we have people speeding down during rush hour, swerving around the potholes, frustrated by the lights on Lake Street and driving irresponsibly. So I want to second the request that for the safety of all the people on the street, that some kind of speed bump be included. And um, I agree with the last speaker that children at play, although it's a nice sign, will not stop people who are impatient and have one objective, which is to cut through our neighborhood as quickly as possible to get to Mass Ave. So I really do feel that it's a safety issue for the whole neighborhood. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, any other people wish to be heard? Okay. And the, any other comments from board members? Mr. Hurd. I would just say, I don't think we would take up anything now, but it could be if this is persistent and the residents can let us know if 
the paving of this road increases the amount of traffic flow. There's plenty of streets down there on the other side of Lake Street and on all the side streets where we have no don't no entry from X to X, and you know this, the residents will have to comply with it too. So you'd have to go around to get into your house. But if it's a problem, we could certainly do a do not enter from 4 to 6 p.m. to alleviate people coming through if it's becoming a problem. So I think that's just something that as the road gets paved, the residents can take a look at and just alert us if it's becoming an issue. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, would you, if you're going to come up to the microphone just, just so people can hear you. I appreciate your saying that, and that has been suggested um, in the neighborhood even before this request was made to have those restrictions. What is the procedure for so putting that in place? Chair, if I may? Yes. We can, in the process of this, just refer this matter either to the town manager or the traffic advisory committee just to take a look at whether that's appropriate in that location. Yes, I mean, you, 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 may I, Mr. Sure. Chair? I think you could start with me. I'll ask uh, Mr. Amstutz, who will be with us later tonight, to take a look at it and maybe escalate it from there. Yes. And, and it, that, that sounds like a great suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Finally, Mrs. Mahan? And <clears throat> what we've done in the past um, on these particular um, requests, and we may do in the future with some sort of trial basis is we've kind of stuck to the betterment rules. Um, if um, whoever is organizing or going out and speaking to the residents on that part of the affected street, um, generally the then Board of Selectmen, now Select Board, follows the betterment rule of two thirds of the neighbors. So I'd just like to put that out there. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Okay, so with that, we have a, a motion for approval by Mr. Diggins seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Uh, along with that approval, uh, we have a referral to the town manager um, to look into the traffic uh, issues. Um, did, during, did, I think, well, all traffic issues, let's say. Um, Attorney Hine. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to note that the way I will sort of receive this is, there's a motion to approve the betterment, which is a very specific thing. It's basically a financing arrangement to uh, resurface the roadway according to the way it was laid out. And then there's a sort of ancillary motion alongside of it to uh, have this traffic calming discussion or right. no turn you know, discussion referred to the town manager. Yeah, thank, thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hurd. Yes, and I would note that once you have it paved, you can come back to the select board's office to shut down the street, to have a nice block party to celebrate your new street. <laughs> Mr. Diggins. That would be a dance party. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Great. Thank you, you very much. Sorry. Right. Item 11 is also a public hearing. The Mount Gilboa Neighborhood Association request to repair private way. This is a much bigger area. Laurel Kane, a resident uh, in that neighborhood. She's and she's with us. Okay, great. Mr. Chair, may I note something while uh, we're waiting for Ms. Sure. I just want to note that this is under Section 5 alternate petition. Just for folks who might be watching and sort of wondering why this is very slightly different than our, tr than our more typical uh, betterment application. Sure. Hi, good evening. Okay, good evening, Ms. King. Did, uh, before I turn, did you want to elaborate on that, Attorney Hammer? Yeah, just for a yeah, moment. Yeah, it, it, just before we start, I just wanted a little clarification. So, Attorney Heim. So, our previous applicant uh, basically noted that there wasn't an HOA. Well, what uh, is happening essentially here is that um, the Mount Gilboa Neighborhood Association kind of is an HOA. They've all banded together for the common interests of raising and maintaining funds to help make sure that the neighborhood is essentially uh, kept in good uh, working order. So you have a mass petition for several roads and the abutters aren't abutters to one private way, they're abutters that are basically pulled together in common to try to make sure that they 
um, maintain and improve the private waste in their in their area. So I just wanted to note that that, that Arlingtonians do have that option. That's a private matter for residents of private way to organize themselves to do that, but it is uh, one strategy that these folks have utilized to help manage their private ways. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Um, good evening, Ms. Kane. Good evening. Yeah, if you could tell us a little bit about the project and, and the request. Sure. Um, I would like to start by saying that for those of you who have been in town government for some time, you may remember a gentleman by the name of Harry McCabe. And uh, he was instrumental in getting this association founded in 1949. Um, so we are carrying on um, the business of the association, which is to maintain the roads. And um, I will borrow the phrase of the um, previous gentleman who said they, his roads looked like they'd been bombed. Our roads are pretty bad. And um, so we have followed the betterments process. We have... Um, done extensive communications with the uh, 72 abutters, and we've received the two-thirds vote necessary to proceed. Great. Thank you. Um, and I'll turn it to the board now for any questions or motions. Uh, Mr. Hurd. I'll move approval. And Attorney Heim already answered my one question. Great. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Second. Great. Mr. Helmuth. Uh, no questions. Happy to support. Great. And Mr. Diggins. No questions, thank you. Great. I'm happy to support this as well. Um, this is a public hearing, so if there is any members of the public who wish to be heard. No one, okay. All right, so on a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Uh, and if I may, on a personal note, it's been a, it's been a pleasure to work with this resident who's uh, been in contact with my office quite a bit, trying to help get this sorted out. I really appreciate her persistence and dedication to this association. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mr. Chair. Yes. Bef sorry for the multiple breaks. Can I confer with Attorney Heim before we take up the next matter for sure. just a few seconds? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Do, do you want to anyway? take a little? Yeah, yeah why don't we take a break for a couple minutes? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, item 12, appointments, constables for the town of Arlington, all terms to expire June 30th, 2024. Uh, three people, Sean Galvin, Stephen Kelly, Wayne. Uh, so as the board likely recalls, it authorized me, I believe, at the last meeting or the meeting prior to uh, review applications that had been received for the position of constable, come back and recommend up to three constables to be appointed, um, and then ask for the board's approval. Uh, we had already um, had several applications on file at that time and then received a few more applications after that board meeting. Uh, the three names that are before you tonight uh, were uh, those that were received in order and recommended in good standing by the police department, uh, up to three. Uh, there were some additional applications uh, that came in after the fact, and in the future we can con continue to consider those, but at this point, again, these are the three names that were both timely uh, as well as given a certification of good standing by the police department to be appointed. So I would recommend the board's consideration of the appointment of these three individuals to serve as constable in Arlington. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chapter I'll turn to the board. Um, and I, again, I'll take the second and third names, Mr. Kelly and Ms. De Prasigian, De Prasigian, um Mrs. Mahan. I move approval. Thank you. Mr. Hurd? Second. Mr. Diggins? Um, uh, I, I just have um, a couple of curiosity questions you know, about um, Mr. Prasigian. You know, so I noticed that the, the, the date on the um, criminal history is from, the, it's from September 24th. 2019. Let me bring it up. Uh, Mr. Chapter, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that's up right now. And Mr. Chapter, I'm to look at. It's true. It's like if you look at the bottom of any of those pages, I mean, there's a 24, 2019. I'm just wondering why. Um, I mean, I'm going to approve it, but I'm just kind of curious as to why it's so um, from nearly two years ago. Oh, 
Mr. Diggins, are you asking why it was performed in 2019? Or, or why, yeah, I guess not so much why it was performed in 2019, but why it is that we are getting a report that is from 2019 as opposed to a report that is more recent. So that, that is based on the fact that this application had been received then and reviewed by the police department at that time. If the board's uncomfortable, we could certainly ask for an updated review to cover the past two years. Well, I mean, are you comfortable? I mean, do you, Mr. Chair, I mean, are you comfortable, uh, Mr. Chatterley? If you are, that's fine with that. I, I, I would be, but I would understand if the, the board wanted a, a deeper review. I'm okay. My colleagues are okay, that's fine. And, 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 um, and this is also, I, mean, I haven't read one of these, so I'm, if, um, if you could go down to page three of that um, report, you know, I'm just trying to understand what I'm looking at. You know, there's like alias names. You know, uh, there's a, a section on there with aliases. You um, know, I mean, what am I looking at? You um, know, it's like it's got like a, a list of them. And the last one's like Wild Bill. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure yeah. what, what, what you're what, referring what to, Mr. Diggins. Okay, so you, so let's see. Um, so you see the one that has the, the date 9 2019, right? We have to refer to that. So it's, it's like towards the bottom of um, the, the PDF we got on this section. Okay. Did you see that, Mr. Chaplain? So that's it. It's criminal history, page one of two. Which one? Page ten of twelve of the mm. of the attachment. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Right, Mr. Chair. It's t page twelve, ten of twelve of the attachment. I see that, yeah. Okay, now I, I, I don't know if it, you, have a, you will have a question about that, Mr. Diggins, is it? I'm just, I just, I'm just wondering what am I looking at? I mean, so it's got aliases, I mean, is that like all the, the names this person goes by? Uh, Attorney Hine. Mr. Chair, without confusing myself for a member of Arlington PD, these types of background checks are usually run through the National Criminal Information Center. So they pull up a lot of information that is meant to basically identify whether someone's ever used or had another name at any different point in time. Um, it's hard to say just from this information the different reasons that might be the case, but the main reason that you're engaging in a Cori check is to make sure that you don't have any significant criminal convictions within the last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. So, I'm not quite sure why all this information has been included um, for the board's review. I'm sorry, I see Mr. Hurd is, is trying to raise a point, but um, the reality is, is that it's gonna be hard to say based on this printout what exactly the context is for these other names, you know, having been registered in different places for official information. It's like if I did a LexisNexis person search, I might find someone's married name, maiden name, uh, a name that they had used in some context uh, for military service or something like that, or something like that. I, I, I can't say for sure based on this, but that's usually where these types of things are generated. Okay. Um, anything further, Mr. Diggins? Well, because like yeah, under that, I, okay, I, I'm, I'm just so confused, me, but it's like I said, I'm, if the town manager then feels the other, that's just fine with it. And I'm going to go with it. You know, you know, we have a, a, a long meeting. I'm going to not ask another question on this. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hurd, did you? Well, I we just know we see this a lot as part of my professional business in real estate closings. And when you do a closing, you'll sign a document that has AKAs, or here they call them aliases. And people generally sit there and they're like, well, this isn't my name. This isn't my name. 
and it's usually, it's associated with your social security number when they run your credit report. It could be as simple as you applied for a credit card one time and somebody put your name in wrong. Your name's registered somewhere and they misspelled your name and then all these name, these name variations stick with you and people have to sign saying that that is them who has this similar name associated with your social security number and date of birth. So it's not uncommon to have name variations out there. It might not even be a name that someone goes by. It just is out there. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Hurd. Indeed, uh, uh, that was a very satisfactory answer. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, Mr. Helm. I think you do we have a motion yet for this? We do. We have a motion Please. by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by oh, Mr. Hurd. Great. No questions. Thank you. Okay. And I have no questions either. So on Mr. Kelly and Mr. Parsegian's um, appointment, we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Hahn. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's a 5 0 vote. Okay, and I will take up Mr. Galvin. Uh, Mr. Chair, at this point, I'm going to recuse myself. Uh, Mr. Galvin is a client of mine, and I just realized I actually signed this application. So <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to step out while you discuss Mr. Galvin's application. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And Mr. Chair, um, the Board of Mil Administrator will note time he exited it and time he returned. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Let me see Ms. Costa writing down the time now. Uh, okay, so on Mr. Galvin's appointment, uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, move approval. Thank you. Mr. Diggins? Second. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan? Um, no questions, happy to support this. Okay. I have no questions, happy to support it as well. So on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins for appointment of Mr. Galvin, Attorney Heim. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous, uh, well, so four, zero, one vote. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Attorney Heim. Um, Ms. Costa, if you wouldn't mind letting, letting Mr. Hurd know. Okay. Oh, Mr. Hurd is now back with us. Um, item 13, licenses and permits for approval, food vendor license, Ginger Exchange Express, Master Pies, 1181 Mass Ave, Christine Chan. Uh, is she with us? Yes. Okay. Oh. Oh, there she Hi is. there. Okay. Good, evening. Good evening, Ms. Chan. Um, Good evening. Yeah, if you could just tell us about uh, the application and, and the business you'd like to open in town here. Yes. Um, I'm looking to open a um, Ginger, Ginger Exchange Express, which is a takeout and delivery only um, play location. This is uh, my fourth location. Um, I have three other uh, existing operations right now in different towns. But I'd um, be interested in opening at 1181 Massachusetts Avenue. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will turn it to the board for questions, uh, comments. Mr. Diggins. I will happily move approval of this request. It's an interesting place. I mean, uh, uh, I mean I, uh, the symphony, uh, see, the symphony pad tie. That's amazing. <laughs> hey, you know, so so I'll, I'll have to give that a try. You know, I walk past there, you know, um, after that workout. So I will stop in, you know, and try that out. You know, and you, know, you also have pizzas? Yes, we're doing two concepts under one roof. Nice. We always you wanted know. to try that out. Yeah, without using the word fusion. What kind right. of thing? You know, so, so yeah, welcome aboard. You know, assuming my colleagues we go along with this and we vote for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for, for joining our town. 
was out of town. Happy to be part of it. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Great. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> no, thank you very much for choosing to do business in Arlington. Uh, I wish you the best of success, and I look forward to, uh, to sampling the menu. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. We're excited to be part of the Arlington community. Arlington community. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, happy to support this. Uh, welcome to Arlington. I just told my colleague, Mr. Helmuth, as we were kind of salivating, looking at the duo menus, uh, I'm really close. I can just roll right down the hill and uh, <laughs> I can take a little bit of eat. So I'm really excited and I wish you good luck and success. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Again, happy to support this. Um, thank you for choosing Arlington. We've approved a few bit, uh, restaurants, I think, right in that little spot, so that could be the new hot spot for Arlington Dining. And just generally, you know, we've had a tough year, but particularly on our restaurant businesses, and we've lost a few sort of staples in town. So it is good to see new businesses and new life, and we're excited to get back out and, and try your, your menu. Okay, great. great. Thank you so much, we're so excited. It's Thank been a tough you. year for everyone, so uh, we're excited to infuse some um, some energy and, uh, and a new place here for um, everyone locally to try. Thank, thank you, Ms. Jan. I also support the application. I just want to clarify something. Mr. Helmuth, did you second the motion? I, I heard a, a motion from Mr. Diggins. If you haven't, if you wouldn't mind. Second motion. Okay. Great. Just in case. Great. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. I wish you the best of luck with the uh, with you. your new business here in Arlington. Um, thank so you so a much. A motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. Attorney Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. Okay, next item is open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a, a concern or request anybody in the chambers who wishes to be heard on open forum? Mr. Warden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, John Warden, uh, uh, Jason Street. As one of your appointees to the Board of Registrars of the Town of Arlington, I thought <coughs> the board would be um, at least uh, interested in my perceptions on Miss um, Julie uh, Brazil's proposal <coughs> about redistricting, <coughs> and um, um, I, in fact, I'm the chairman of the board of registrars. We don't meet or elect officers very often. Uh, I, I, the only w way I even knew this was coming up. That this, well, the Board of Registrars, as you, are, I'm sure, are aware, uh, do play a not insignificant role in the conduct of the elections uh, of, of town, state, and federal offices in this, in this community. And, and uh, there are uh, four of us, including the town clerk and three appointees by the board. And, um, <clears throat> but we were not consulted or even told about this. The only way I know is that the chair chairman of the finance committee called me up and said, what do you think of this? And I said, well, striking me with a very su su sudden, a sudden idea. I thank uh, the chairman of the select board for, for uh, looking up that. Uh, you're much too young to remember that stuff. I, I was in first grade at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do remember it. And it was 1970, the first year I was in town meeting. It was a year, it was an interesting year because um, one thing we were battling the Mugars uh, who wanted to put some 24 towers down in what was then just a swamp. Now it's a precious wetland, but then it was just a swamp. And um, um, th th they, they got, well, anyway, I don't have to get into that, but the Mugars are still trying to put something in the, in the wetland. Um, and so there was, but there was a special town meeting that fall in October, as you pointed out, and the League of Women Voters had brought an, a warrant article to to redistrict the town. The, the town, you didn't have to redistrict every 10 years like you do now. 
We could do it whenever we wanted to, and, and the districts that were established uh, had been in there for God knows how long. And as was pointed out, uh, some precincts had 12 members, some had 18, some had some other number. Uh, there were some precincts were divided into part A and part B, and uh, it was, uh, and who knows how the populations uh, related to the, uh, the, the precinct lines. Uh, but the old precinct six, which I had just been elected to, to serve that precinct, which is now mostly precinct eight, um, was people looked at it and they said, well, you've got a fairly compact area. It went from Wyman Terrace up to about Academy Street. Um, and uh, you've got 12 members, so you, you, people know their town meeting members and, and town meeting members know each other. In fact, we used to have meetings of town meeting members. Um, and that sounds like a pretty good size. And that was one of the arguments brought before the selectmen as they were then uh, back in, in 1970. And so, <clears throat> so they decided on the 21 precincts, <coughs> each, each would have 12 members. And that is, uh, brought them approximately to the 240 that's in the standard Excuse me one town. second, Mr. Warren. I, I interrupted you, so I gave you some extra time, but if you could wrap it up, because you're uh, all about right. three I, and a half I, minutes I will now. wrap it up, okay. I'm sorry, I mean, I mean all these other people waiting to speak, so exactly. I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you. Um, uh, the, but the, the, the main thing I, I, I want to say is that the idea of, of reducing the precincts is, is a very poor one. We're, 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 we're into to talking about voter participation and make it easier for voters, et cetera. Cutting the people's representatives in town meeting by uh, 5%, that's not very representative. Cutting the number of places where you go to vote by 20%, not very handy for voters. It was done during the pandemic because most people were voting indirectly. Uh, I mean, by, by mail or something. Um, and, and, and also, the, the time frames, as Mr. Heim pointed out, uh, where we have to do this on an accelerated basis, it's going to be enough struggle. You, you may have to move a few precinct lines here and there uh, to get them more even. Uh, none of them is at the 5% level where you have to do it. You could keep them exactly the way they are based on the preliminary figures, if I correctly read the microtype in this copy of the report. Thank you, um, thank you Mr. Wood. I'm going to have to cut you off. You're at four and a half. Uh, well, uh, uh, thank you for uh, giving me this, uh, uh, this, this moment, uh, Mr. Chairman. But, but I'm just saying, look, if, if, you, if you want to change precincts, this isn't the time to do it. We can just stick with the 21. You may be, may be able to meet the statutory deadlines and have an election on time next year. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else in the chambers? I don't think so. Wishes to be heard. Is there anybody through Zoom? Yes. Paul Schlickman. Okay. Anna Hankin. Okay, uh, it's Mr. Schlickman up next. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Schlickman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the board, Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. First, I want to thank you for your unanimous vote four weeks ago to implement traffic calming and pedestrian safety measures on Chestnut Street. However, 566 days after Ann DeRocher's was killed in the Chestnut Terrace crosswalk and 28 days after the select board approved TAC recommendations for traffic calming along Chestnut Street, absolutely nothing has been done to implement any of these common sense fixes. I understand many of the changes require engineering and planning. This is not the case for the no turn on red sign on Chestnut Street as it approaches Mystic Street. Not only is it a relatively simple to install one or two no turn on red signs, there's a compelling reason for immediate action. Four weeks ago, you learned of a 1987 agreement with the Mass Department of Transportation and a warning that if we change anything in this agreement, we could lose state funding uh, for transportation in Chapter 90 funds. The agreement required the town of Arlington to maintain the no turn on red sign on Chestnut at Mystic. I haven't seen the sign in the past 20 years. If there's a significant concern for losing state funding as spoken four uh, weeks ago, the signs should have been replaced a day or two after being directed by the select board. Please get a crew out there in the next day or two to install these signs. On another note, last week I was awakened at 4.55 a.m. by a huge sucking sound 
that sounded like my Roomba was stuck under my bed having a nervous breakdown. I checked my phone and the Roomba was asleep. I looked out my bedroom window to find a DPW crew clearing a storm drain. This was not an emergency. This was scheduled planned overtime to address prior complaints. This isn't the first time the DPW has decided to schedule a 4 a.m. overtime for non-emergency work. A couple of years ago, they brought out jackhammers to dig out and reinstall a manhole cover. I can understand noisy work in case of an emergency, such as a water main break, but we need to stop scheduling DPW overtime to conduct noisy work during pre-dawn hours. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Shookman. Uh, Ms. Hankin is next. Good evening, Ms. Hankin. Hello, um, Anna Hankin, Precinct 6. Um, I also wanted to speak about the redistricting. Um, I looked into the redistricting plans um, earlier today, and because there wasn't a whole lot of explanation alongside them as to the fact that they were computer generated and not human decided and the plans that were actually actively being proposed, I actually started to get really upset because particularly the 16 precinct plan looks a little bit like gerrymandering. All of the really dense neighborhoods are split up and attached to much less dense and often much higher income neighborhoods so that their votes are diluted. Um, and I understand that absolutely no human malice was intended here. It was a computer generated map and that is fine, but I want to really caution everyone to be really, really clear in communicating this to the public. Always have that kind of explanation attached because otherwise distrust in the town clerk or the select board can really grow. Um, voter suppression has been a major issue over the last history of our entire country, um, <laughs> but it's it's really been a publicly spoken about issue, especially in the last couple of years. Um, and I really urge you guys to do anything you can to get a lot of public comment and make it really clear what's happening, when decisions are being made, when comments can be made. Take out a ad in the paper, put signs up at the park, get a guy with a bugle in the middle of the center of town send out a message along the snow phone tree for the high school. Just get the word out as best you can. I'm gonna work as a town meeting member to talk to my precinct and let everyone know that redistricting is happening and that they need to make public comment. Um, but this is such a big decision. It impacts so many people's lives. I really just be so clear describing it and making thoughtful decisions about it. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Okay. Good evening, Ms. Malofchuk. Uh, good evening, Beth Malofchuk, Russell Street. Um, thank you for this opportunity to address the select board. Um, uh, quickly, I'd like to um, support everything that Paul Schlickman said. I attended some of those um, TAC meetings related to the unfortunate and untimely death of Ann DeRocher. So I, um, I hope that the concerns that he expressed will be uh, addressed in a timely manner. I um, speak also uh, about the uh, re-precincting plan. I'm very concerned at the notion of reducing representation in 
uh, town meeting for uh, the residents of Arlington, that's a concern, as well as when we see across the nation um, uh, voter suppression and, um, well, yeah, it's voter suppression. Um, uh, so I hope that the select board, as I know they do on the different issues that come before them, take a lot of time in uh, looking at the proposals that come before them. I am alarmed that the notion of saving money uh, was raised, that cost efficiencies have been raised uh, regarding elections. With less than a 20% turnout of um, registered voters for municipal elections, I, I find it, um, uh, I just don't understand the pittance that would be saved in um, comparison to the fast approaching potentially $40 million override. Um, it, I, I just don't understand. I don't think that should be a consideration. I think we should be trying to make voting easier. And uh, I'd like to see a get out the vote campaign. Um, uh, I, and I'm open to um, suggestions of who uh, does that actually, if it would, uh, if it's not um, a municipal activity. <laughs> In any case, I think I, I made my points. I'll be following this closely and I, I look forward to outreach on the part of the municipal offices to the public. These issues are so seriously, we see that across the nation, people are um, informed about them. Many people in Arlington worked on the get out the vote effort in Georgia. I'm happy they did. Um, I just think these issues and the unintended consequences are too serious and momentous to have a cost uh, consideration on these issues. Thank you, Beth Malofchek. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who wishes to? One more. One more, okay. Can you hear Mo Hanlon? Okay. Good evening, Mr. Hi, Hanlon. Hanlon. Here and see me? Yes. Awesome. Um, so I wanted to echo uh, Mr. Schleckman's point. Being a resident in Mass Ave, I live near uh, Mass Ave and Appleton. So I um, wanted to just echo that, that we re have a very recurring and active uh, intersection here. So I just wanna keep in mind that. And other than that, regarding everything else on the item, um, I'm just still gonna research and take everything in good faith and I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you. That closes open forum for this evening. Um, on to traffic rules and orders and other business. Item 14, request on street overnight parking waiver. Paul Palais, 64 Mount Vernon Street. Um, is he, I believe he's with us tonight. Hello. Good evening. If you could state your name, um, address, and oh. the, uh, the request. I'm not sure if you can see me or not. Something's happening with my camera. Uh, yeah. My name's Paul Play, and uh, I live at the 64 Mount Vernon Street. Yeah, and we can hear you, but we can't see you. Uh, oh, there we oh. are. Yep, now we can see you. Ah, sorry, yes, it's just a button. Uh, 64 Mount Vernon, Arlington and having very difficult situation with parking, uh, plus my uh, disabled father, who is um, um, getting treatments at Mass General Hospital, using a car a lot, I've been ticketed multiple times already overnight, um, and have no ability to currently get a paid parking. So, plus it's a multiple unit situation. Um, all right, I will turn it to the board for, for uh, questions or comments. Mr. Hurd. Um, I, you know, with these situations, we usually have, 
with any request for overnight parking, we generally have a memorandum from the police department, which we don't have here, which I think, so I mean, my inclination is that I just don't have enough information to vote on this tonight, which would be, so I don't necessarily want to deny it, but I, I don't think that we have the information to take a vote on this tonight. I'm not general. sure. I mean, I contacted so, police but department. Hang, hang on a second, Mr. Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Po no, excuse me. Yeah, I, 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 that was Mr. Hurd's comment. It wasn't a question okay. for you right now. Um, so I don't know if you have anything further. So I, I would have, I would have a motion to table. Um, but also, you know, I, I do know we set up a specific guideline in situations for where people have medical reasons that they have, that they're re requesting overnight parking for reasons of disability or medical reasons that we, there's a process to do this administratively. Attorney Jaime, if, uh, and if I'm saying this incorrectly, please correct me. So essentially we have a process where you don't have to come before us in a public forum and talk about your medical conditions. And I think that that is something that you could contact the, the select board's office as well to see if, if that's the right avenue for this. Yeah, did you want to add anything, Attorney Hahn? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Hurd, you do have a specific process for an application for an overnight parking waiver on the uh, exemption, I'm sorry, both a waiver and an exemption based on uh, an identifiable disability. So that process was moved to an administrative review in the interest of not having folks, as you said, uh, have to identify and discuss their disabilities before the select board. So um, that is a, a possibility. I don't know whether it was vetted or not. Um, All right. Um, okay, so do you want to bring the motion to table pending? So I, I would move to table the overnight parking request that's before us and advise the applicant to speak to the select board's office about whether or not his situation can be, the overnight parking exemption can be issued under our medical exemption. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You, I, I, I'm inclined to second it. You know, I was trying to recall from when I read it, he read the, the, um, the PDF associated with this. I mean, it seemed like part of that process had been engaged. I know there had been some communication with Officer Rateau about this, I mean, and Officer Rateau was, 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 was really sending me the uh, applicant, you know, or the uh, Mr. Policy, play, play, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry about mispronouncing your name, and to the select board, and, um, but maybe it's, that was missed in there, so I hope that's the case, I mean, so in which case, I mean, I do support, second, um, um, Mr. Hurd's um, tabling motion, and I'll support it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmuth. Uh, no questions, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, yeah, I think, I, I know, what Mr. Diggins is speaking about with Officer Rateau, what it is is this individual has contacted the police department and he said, well, you can only get that permission from the select board. You need to start the select board process, which is what the, the email is from um, the resident. Then normally what we do, um, maybe in concert with um, him exploring the um, disability medical issue, um, but also at the same time, if for some reason that's, he's not uh, applicable for that, if I could ask Mr. Hurd along with his motion that if those avenues are exhausted that then we, we then, since he's initiated the process of contacting the select board, then refer to our um, overnight parking, which also handles daytime parking requests subcommittee. Yes, absolutely. And Thank just you. to clarify, I wasn't and I, I probably misspoke. I wasn't saying that Officer Rateau or anyone in the police department failed to give us a memo. It just, we, it wasn't attached. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, and I don't have anything further. So at this point, and I may need a little clarification. Attorney Heim. Just, just in the interest of being uh, uh, direct so you don't have to ask a question. Basically, an applicant claiming the exemption based on a disability 
should provide written proof of qualification based on uh, registration of a handicap plate or placard, enrollment in Social Security disability uh, benefits, um, I'm sorry, Social Security or other disability benefits, or a letter identifying the resident as disabled on a physician's or medical professional's letterhead stationery. You can submit that to the board uh, office uh, and they can help uh, process the application. If, that, if, if, if the basis on, on disability, if there are other reasons, as I think Mrs. Mahan is suggesting, uh, there's an application, and then I think that sort of get things going with the uh, supporting materials. Okay, thank, thank you, Attorney Hyde. Um, so on the motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, um, to table, to start the administrative process, and depending on where that goes, maybe it will come back before us. So if Mr. Pillay, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, is it Pillay? Yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. If Mr. Pillay uh, can contact the select board's office, uh, they can help walk through the information that he needs to submit for an exemption uh, from the overnight parking uh, prohibition on the basis of disability. And if that exemption can't be met, um, then he would submit a different type of application that would be a more public application before the board. Before the board, okay, great, thank you. And, and because it is a different procedure, that's why we're making that motion. It can be done, perhaps can be done administratively without having the issues uh, discussed during the public meeting. So uh, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. And Mr. Pillay, I'm going to suggest that you get in touch with the board office tomorrow. Um, they can walk you through that administrative procedure. I'm sorry, I'm sorry which office? office? The select board office. <coughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay, which the office? office? The select board oh, office. Ah, uh, select oh, board office. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm new to this yeah. procedure, no, no so. Problem. Okay. Thank you, and best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Item 15, request for handicapped parking space on Allen Street. Um, John Hurd, select board. Mr. Hurd. Yep, this is, we discussed this at the last meeting. This is just, I'm looking to ha have the board approve a handicapped parking space. So it's just a general parking space. It's not specific to any one handicapped placard or license plate. It's on Allen Street. I was, re I was contacted by a business that has a handicap ramp that runs into the street. My understanding is they've already contacted engineering, got approval, and possibly even installed the curb cut ramp. So right next to that, they're looking for a handicapped spot. Um, we've had some back and forth and miscommunications, I think, amongst departments. So. We still don't have the specific location, but what I would propose to the board tonight, since the this business has been waiting um, in, you know, to anybody's parking spot, but is that I spoke with the town manager, putting a, so I move to have the town manager confer with the police department on a temporary basis to designate a place on Allen Street to put a temporary bollard with a handicap, um, designation while, and I anticipate by the next meeting in August, we can have a full report where an appropriate place for a handicapped spot on Allen Street would be. So my motion tonight would be for a temper, to authorize the town manager to work with the police department to identify an appropriate place, which I would guess would be the ultimate place, but in, to install a temporary handicap designation on a orange ball on the side of the road. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. I'll be happy to second that one, too. Thank you. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Happy to support. Mrs. Mahan. Um, also um, happy to support this. I just have a process question sure. because I have a memory and I may be misremembering. Um, when um, we did the designation and increasing the handicap um, designated spaces in town um, in, I believe, the conserva conservation. I have conservation on my mind, poor Mr. Galvin. Um, the uh, Disability Commission um, 
went through. My only thing is I just don't, I want to make sure everybody that when we come back, we're voting this temporarily, when we vote it final, we have the information from engineering, we have the information from the police department, and if there's any other stakeholder um, that should be part of the process, and maybe there isn't on the Disability Commission, but I know when they went through all that, and I just don't want, um, you know, similar to earlier tonight, sometimes people misunderstand, you know, the board was not voting to go to 16 or 18 or anything like that. We're beginning to, so if you could just make sure, yes. um, and if, if, if that's okay, Mr. Hearn. Yep, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, so in a motion, I have no further comments. I support that the motion by Mr. Hurd. Um, so in a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, for authorization to the town manager to work with the Arlington Police Department to install a temporary handicap parking installation. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, item 16. Uh, for approval, Connect Arlington Sustainable Transportation Plan, Daniel Amstutz, Senior Transportation Planner, and Ms. Raid is still with us uh, tonight as well, for this item as well. I think Dan should be on. Dan Sprich. And then if you could bring it, you brought it up. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, good evening again. It's Jenny Rate, Director of Planning and Community Development. I'm joined by Dan Amstutz shortly, the Senior Transportation Planner, both part of the Department of Planning and Community Development. And I'm going to just walk through um, some of these slides. So if you could start, please. Um, this is really the conclusion of a year plus effort to develop a sustainable transportation plan. I think at one point we were calling it a sustainable mobility plan. Um, that was, we scrapped the word mobility for some reason. Um, and we were able to utilize um, an, a town appropriation coupled with community development block grant funds again um, in order to craft a plan that uh, sort of transforms the way that we look at transportation in Arlington, to and from Arlington as well. Um, and uh, the plan, of course, was guided by an advisory committee, which was quite comprehensive and did actually meet in person briefly. So that was, <laughs> that was great when it happened in the uh, police uh, department meeting room. Um, and, you know, a lot of engagement with this committee, particularly guiding um, and helping us to think about the plan process, um, also overseeing some of the components of working with the consultant um, team. Nelson Nygaard was hired. Um, and uh, people across town, not just town departments, but also representing East Arlington, Arlington Heights, and the center. Um, people from different industries were also participating, and of course, different advocacy groups. So we tried to make a really representative uh, group of people who would be guiding this process. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned, the project funding came from a town appropriation in CDBG. I mentioned CDBG earlier for the housing production plan, and I'll just note for both of these plans, we can use CDBG because it has an equity focus and is also focused on low to moderate income households. Um, so we were able to kick off in January of 2020. Uh, quickly, of course, thereafter, we had to scrap a lot of the initial thought process around engagement. But actually, we learned a lot of things during this engagement planning process and um, really did some sort of, I would say, unique things during the pandemic um, in order to try to reach as many people, including, um, you can see on the screen, the sort of door hangers that were put in Arlington Housing Authority properties and other senior housing buildings in town um, in order to reach basically as many people as possible. Of course, we also utilized uh, the same types of uh, town outreach that we typically do for most plans and other educational initiatives um, through online surveys, uh, feedback map, um, various meetings. We conducted focus groups. We had stakeholder interviews um, and a lot of presentations to uh, over the course of many committee, committee meetings. Um, so all of that took place despite the fact that we were, of course, in a pandemic, um, as well as two online forums, which had a, a great range of participation and also a great number of viewers when people couldn't actually uh, attend the presentation. Next slide, please. So what is Connect Arlington? Um, so the, the Arlington Master Plan has a transportation section, which of course has a number of goals and strategies. The Master Plan Implementation Committee has been tracking 
the implementation of the master plan. And remarkably, we actually have been accomplishing quite a bit as part of the entire master plan process. Um, but what we've, uh, we observed at one point in time is that the way that we were addressing transportation through the Arlington Master Plan was not, um, was not responsive to some future mobility issues that we, uh, started, we've been starting to see and experience um, certainly in the last five years and even perhaps prior to that while we were developing the Master Plan. We wanted to do things that would create sort of reach goals for the town but also were realistic and practical uh, for the various neighborhoods and places that are part of that com comprise Arlington. So the 20 year strategy is intending to provide a safe, reliable, multimodal transportation network that meets the needs of all ages and abilities of people across Arlington, people who are coming to town and people who are utilizing various systems in town. It, um, it also, of course, sets priorities and recommendations and it covers all aspects of transportation, walking, biking, public transit, driving, and something called micro-mobility, which is basically taking people to and from places in between, sort of that first mile, last mile that we often talk about here in Arlington, due to the fact that we don't have real fixed rail transit systems here. Um, so it's, it's very ambitious, and I'm gonna just, if you go to the next slide. Um, so ambitious that we're calling it a paradigm shift, um, which might sound bold, but I think if you look at the sort of graphic here, You'll note that the top is about pedestrian accessibility, um, and the second one is about bicycles, scooters, rideables, ri ride, uh, rideables. <laughs> that is the word. Say that um, ten times. Go. I'm not going to say it one more time. Um, with public transportation as the focus, and on down to vehicle traffic. And of course, we, we do talk about electric vehicles. Mm. We tried to make this align a bit with the Net Zero Action Plan. But again, putting pedestrians and people first in our transportation planning was very important and also responsive to a number of the things that we heard during this uh, transportation, the, the whole entire planning process. Um, so, you know, when thinking about this and looking forward with the plan, and you're going to hear about the goals um, from Dan, who's going to speak next, um, I think you'll be uh, very intrigued about the various things that are in the plan. Um, we've also uh, got a lot to share about the implementation parts, and then we'll be happy to answer your questions. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan next. Thank you, Jenny. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Uh, good evening. Um, thank you, board members and, and Jenny again. Uh, so I'll just talk for a couple of minutes to wrap things up here. Um, but uh, as Jenny was saying, this is uh, an ambitious plan. And we are, these are the, the vision and goals sort of break down into these eight different strategies that are sort of very briefly highlighted here, prioritizing safety, making sure um, everybody is represented in mobility, that we really focus on pedestrians and bicycles and, and people, um, vulnerable users, you might say as well, but also enhanced transit so that people that um, you can, you know, walking and biking can get you some distances, but sometimes public transportation is necessary to get you further. And we do have a very robust, uh, you know, transportation network and public transportation in town. And we want to enhance that, make that better. Um, focusing on uh, sustainability too, as, as you know, these other modes, this is a sustainable transportation plan, so environmentally sustainable, but also I would say resilient so that people have many different options and ways to get around. Infrastructure and priorities and policies, excuse me, to um, enhance the economic uh, environment and, and curbside management is part of that, and then responsiveness and transparency. So I'll get to uh, uh, a couple of those uh, things in the next slides. Um, just briefly, the plan, if you've seen it on the website, it's split into four different parts. There is an executive summary that's a short uh, 20 pages or so, and strategies and implementation is the most recent piece of it that has come together over the last uh, several months, uh, which really gives, gets into and dives into what are we actually going to do. The fact book was released last year uh, in the fall to give a really solid picture of the existing conditions of the transportation network within the town. And then for both the fact book and the strategies and implementation, there was, as Jenny mentioned, a lot of public engagement that took place. And so we've got a summary from both of those periods, talking about the surveys, focus groups, maps, uh, committee meetings and presentations that we 
uh, that we presented at. And so um, just, you know, everything sort of wrapped up there into um, and, and put into a whole plan as well. So uh, on to the next slide. This is where we get into more of the meat of things and the, the, the implementation. So current implementation, these are things that are we have started doing or are doing that were um, came up as priorities for the plan as well. Um, and so these are, so A, B, C, D refer to these different um, strategy areas and the yellow are meant to be sort of the priority ones or the ones that have been put into priority for the, uh, for the plan and, and trying to get things done first. So addressing safety of roadway intersections, um, you know, we're talking about some, many of these are sort of overlap with one another. So thinking about connect, or, or excuse me, Chestnut Street or Mass Ave and Appleton has very ugly angles that we are trying to uh, firm up and, and deal with, uh, working with the design review committee. Um, this Minuteman Bike Week Planning Project is one that is uh, upcoming uh, very shortly. We're using CPA funds to conduct a study of the bikeway for safety and access and uh, better mobility, basically, for that really important connector, um, shared use path, and non motorized uh, transportation spine for the entire town. And so we'll be uh, selecting a consultant very shortly and starting that project this year. Um, again, sort of the, the one about enhancing pedestrian safety, uh, minimizing pedestrian crossing distances, again, different projects that are going on, but I'll refer back to the Chestnut Street project again as, as one, trying to reduce distances along that street so that pedestrians don't have to cross quite as, as far, and so it limits their exposure as they're in the street. And then bicycle facilities, this, again, trying to connect up pieces along Mass Ave of the bike lanes, uh, bike facilities that we have to make it complete. And so the Mass Ave Appleton project is, is trying to get us in that direction um, with what we, we've been looking at. So on the next, uh, well, there's a couple of other pieces here, that, uh, but I'll go on to the next slide to the priority ones. Um, again, things that we'd like to, to do sort of in the first, the first ones, um, adopting Vision Zero policy, because we, you know, we think that, that safety should be really the highest priority, and that's what the policy helps us focus on. Uh, complete streets, policy and guidelines, uh, the prioritization plan, we can update that now, and if there's new guidance from the state for the complete streets plan and the funding that we can get through the state for those projects. Um, traffic calming always comes up as a question and an issue, and I think um, having a program is something we need to work towards to, to deal with neighborhood traffic uh, issues and, and um, slowing speeds, because um, that can really increase safety as well. Uh, safe routes to school projects, um, one that we're working with the Dallas School on one project, but also the Stratton um, infrastructure project for sidewalks going up uh, Hemlock Street to Stratton School. Um, you know, that is going to be a few years away of implementation, but that is currently under design, so I consider that upcoming. Um, and then, again, enhancing pedestrian safety and in intersections. Um, we've talked about looking at the un un some unsignalized crossings along Mass Ave as um, areas that are still of concern that we need to look further at. Um, on to the next slide, there's a couple of other things. There's, there's a lot of things that are going on, but um, I wanted to just very quickly, uh, bus priority. This is and, and um, bus uh, transit. You know, the bus, there's something called the bus network redesign, which is coming up soon, which is going to look a lot more bus priority, but also the whole network in general. Um, you know, continuing to work with the MBTA on on bus stops that need uh, accessibility improvements, like uh, we talked about a few meetings ago with regards to Pleasant Street. Um, implementing the mobility piece of the Net Zero Action Plan. And then this other big important piece is this local transportation improvement program where we can really plan for funding and, and plan for implementing important transportation projects within town to increase safety and mobility for everyone. Um, on the next slide, this is the last slide on metrics. We want to, you know, it's very important that we make sure that we are over this 20 years and beyond really meeting our goals and and using data that can help us to understand that we're meeting our goals, um, data that is, that is also uh, easily accessible, uh, but can sort of give us a snapshot into where we're going. So this uh, talks about crashes, load share, uh, travel time, uh, bike lane miles, and also sidewalk investments as these, these five main metrics to start with to understand you know, tracking over the years 
uh, that we're making progress and that this plan is being successful. So that's something that we'll definitely start in earnest um, moving ahead with the plan implementation. So on to the next slide, which I think is the end. So thank you everyone very much for um, listening and happy to ask, answer any questions. Before we do that, I just want to say a tremendous thank you to Dan for all of the work he's done on this plan, uh, leading and managing the entire project um, during a very challenging time. I would say that he's done an exceptional job. So I just want to appreciate his effort. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Ms. Wright. And Dave, thank you, Mr. Amstutz. Yeah, this, this is an incredible amount of time that has been put in and you've met with um, members of the board as you've gone along through this process and we've seen the amount of work that you've done. So it's a, it's very impressive. I'm gonna turn it over to members for, for comments and questions. Um, and I'll start with Mr. Diggins. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so, well, I'm, I'm very biased about this because you know, I was a member of the, um, started off as the Sustainable Transportation Plan Advisory Committee. I was representing TAC, uh, and I'm on TAC as a representative of the Chamber of Commerce representing ACMI. Uh, and, and also, I, first off, I do want to give a lot of gratitude to, to Mr. Amstis because uh, not only did he guide us through the entire process, but also uh, he did a lot of work at the end. Uh, because the uh, because the the consultants I mean their um, their role in this ended before we were quite finished you know and so it's and he did a wonderful job of, of, of wrapping it up and also talking with uh, members of the select board so that we had a chance to think about this before this part uh, before this, this meeting uh, and what excites me most about this I mean, is that um, local transportation improvement. Um, plan. I, uh, that is what's going to keep this plan, uh, Connect Arlington plan, alive and vibrant and, and relevant and for 20 plus years. And, 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 and not only can we make plans based on that, but also it's a way for us to really get the community uh, involved and engaged in it. And, and to the extent anyone feels that there were, were shortcomings in the outreach um, in the development of what you see now, uh, you'll be able to contribute uh, in the future. And we'll work to make sure that happens. And I hope that we will model this on what is done at the Boston MPO, that's Metropolitan, Metropolitan Planning Organization, and Mr. Amsitz and I are in that. He represents Arlington, and I represent the Regional Transportation Advisory Council. Uh, and through that, you really get to understand what's involved mean, in getting a project, mean, from idea mean, to reality. Mean, and I really hope that uh, we are able to uh, help people appreciate how we can say we're ready to do a project, but there are so many steps that go into getting that project being implemented. And so um, I'm excited, Ada, and I, I, uh, I, I am, I'm going to motion uh, to approve it if it's not too um, biased on my part to do it, Ada. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helm. Thank you. Uh, happily second the motion to um, endorse. Or we, is that what yeah, th thank you for making that point. Yeah, if, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Diggins, if you could clarify. I think they're looking for a motion of endorsement this evening. Yes. I happily endorse the plan. Okay, thank happily you, Mr. Diggins. And I second the amended motion. Mr. Helm. <laughs> thank you. Just, just some brief comments. Uh, this really is an exceptional plan. I, I read it as much of it as I could this weekend. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, and you can't say that about a lot of planning documents that you read that are this long, but it's so well thought out. It's so well presented. It's so well argued. And it's so clear about what actions the town can take. It's clear about the metrics. You know, the, 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 if you don't measure it, it may as well not have happened. And I think it's very clear-headed about that. So, so kudos to all. Uh, with Dane's leadership and, and your department and all the people who worked on it, um, I think it's going to be a very useful guide. I, I could not agree more about the paradigm shift, flipping the triangle. I think that it is in step with the residents of the town. Um, 
echoing Mr. Hurd's earlier comments about having both of us been through the campaign cycle. Uh, now, I heard, in addition to housing, I heard a lot about transportation, about pedestrian priority, about bicycle safety, about traffic safety for cars. And, and, and I will say my first three to four months on the board, the thing I have heard the most about as a select board member from residents is traffic safety in neighborhoods and in our streets. And it all hangs together. There are safety concerns, there are critical uh, climate change concerns. And, and, and even if all you care about is traffic congestion, we cannot solve this problem if we just keep digging in on car priority. All of those things will get worse. We have to be transformative. I think this is a guide that will help us do that. Um, but to be clear-headed to, to the max, this, these projects need funding. And the town has very limited funds. I, I, I want to call on all of us, our state delegation, our state house delegation, and our residents that your representatives and the Mass Legislature, the governor, and your federal representatives need to hear from you that there is not, not nearly enough funding committed to transportation uh, projects, improvement projects, and that needs to change in, us, in order for us to meet the goals that are in this uh, document, the climate goals that we, we've set, and, and I think that, that it, you should, this, this document pr provides really clear examples of what is possible. And we, the town, I think we have a town manager who is extremely supportive of this, this transformative change. We have a planning department that is, we have a board that is. Uh, we will do what we can with, with the little bit of money that we, that we have available. It would be amazing to do a lot more, a lot faster should we do that. So I just want to take that as inspiration to the whole community. Um, that, that this plan is a starting place and, and it needs to be followed through with the kind of priority that we see at the federal and the state level that, that we used to have and that we can have again. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Um, <clears throat> ditto to everything that's been said before. Um, and, and this is an awful lot of um, information. I've been going through it. Um, I will say, I don't want the answer to the question tonight, but I will let um, Ms. Rader or Mr. Amstutz know that uh, one of the ones I'm really interested in because I'm on the Clean, Clean Energy Futures Committee is um, net zero. Mm -hmm. And I know people say I shouldn't be thinking about money and if we have enough to do everything, but whatever. Um, the um, F2 where it talks about, you know, uh, implementing Arlington's net zero action plan and then it speaks about um, expanding and having more charging stations and things that and the like. Um, and then there's a, a reference to the substrategy, F21. If I can't find it tomorrow, I know it's in here somewhere. Um, I, I haven't been able to get through that. I'm, I'm just only on C1, <laughs> so, but I'll cross-reference that. But if I have any further questions about that, I'm, I know I'm gonna find it. I'll contact um, either one of you. But um, similar to what Mr. Helmet said, um, uh, I mean, as our planning director said, you know, there has to be a paradigm shift. There also has to do, do that not just with the select board, but um, with our legislative delegation in the state house as well as um, uh, the federal government. Now, having said that, everybody wants that. That doesn't mean it's going to happen. So. Um, and again, in, again, in light of what is over the financial horizon for us, I, I mean, just on serving on the Clean en Energy's Future Committee, and I know there'll be some cross transportation pollinization between these two um, committees. I think we really need to, because I, I think the estimate for um, the cost just of that one thing alone, which I think is tantamount and should be sewn into every core of all school and town departments is uh, moving f forward with clean energy, uh, um, especially around electric vehicles, um, that we go through, because right now if you look at all this stuff, it's like, oh, none of this costs anything. No, that's not true. You know, if you look at the little arrows. And I think that's where, like what Mr. Foskett is saying, where we're getting in trouble, is we need to take it one step out further. And then when we really have a handle around that and, and, and who are the people who oversee that, um, then that will help guide us in um, going out and seeing if we can get uh, additional or uh, supplemental um, and continuing funding. 
And then if not, then we really need to have conversations to say not stop anything, but reprioritize and, and maybe parse it out more. I mean, I know Ms. Malofchak, I apologize if I said things wrong. I was pointing out with um, voting, traditionally we just did it one way. You showed up to vote and a few people could get absentee. And the town clerk pointed it out. We have early voting the week before. We have uh, people who can, anyone can vote by mail but we only have one time funding from the federal government. And that's where I think, um, because that's where my head's at, because the chairman and the chairman of, of the finance committee, especially when he put in my husband's plug to tell the town of Arlington I'm not their personal ATM. Um, you know, I think we really need to get in that mindset, because I want to do for, go forward and do as much as we can, but um, so I'll have further conversations or email, maybe that's even better with the two of you tomorrow. And I'm not trying to be a wet blanket or anything like that, but I just see, you know, we start to go down the road. I, I think anything going forward, if we could just have that next step out, which is the financial part. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, and thank you to Mr. Amstutz for all the work to put in this uh, very detailed uh, presentation for us. Um, you know, there's issues in Arlington that divide some of the residents, and there's issues that unite residents, and I think sustainability is certainly one of those issues that everyone can get behind. The, uh, the critical need is written on the wall, and I think everyone agrees in that, and Arlington has, in many, with housing and many other forums, has taken the lead in fighting that issue. And this plan is a big step forward, and this really embodies a lot of what we've heard from residents over the past couple of years on what residents prioritize. And you know, I know, I know I've spoken to a number of people that were really excited just about the fact of connecting the bikeways and having more, being able to, to safely you know, bring bike, bicycle traffic through the town. And there's many, many, many parts of this plan that are goals to move forward. Some of them are large goals and some of them are easy to, to implement. And I look forward to what that will look like. And just for anyone who's looking who might be skeptical about what we're voting on or what this plan encompasses if they don't want to read it, we're not approving a plan to go and take all the parking spaces yeah. up and down Mass Ave. And, all of a sudden say, all right, if you have a car, you're out of luck. It's a, it's a long-term plan, and it just is going to be a goal-oriented plan to make sure that we're balancing the needs of the community versus what we currently have. Um, so I do look forward to future conversations about this, and I think we can do a lot of good based on what we have in front of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and I also want to echo the comments of the other members. This is a very impressive plan, and, and, and one thing that I, and I encourage people to, to look through the documents that are attached to our agenda or do, or do it uh, through the links um, through the planning department because beyond transportation or as part of transportation, it touches on so many issues that, that we've been dealing with here. And just as one example, one of the recommendations is study parking in neighborhoods adjacent to commercial concentrations and or transit areas and consider additional regulations were warranted. Well, we've heard from a lot of people on that. That's in here and, and to, to think about it. And to, to Mr. Hurd's point on implementation, because I think there are some people in the community thought we were voting on a specific proposal tonight that, uh, that, that we're not. But I, I just want to read what, you, what was put in the implementation section. Endorsement of this plan by the Sustainable Transportation Plan Advisor, Advisory Committee and Select Board does not automatically approve all elements of this plan and specific changes and proposals may need to be brought to the board, town meeting, or other bodies for approval. The plan recognizes that and, and it's here. We're endorsing the plan. We're really excited about the plan, but the plan spells out specific things are gonna have to come back for discussion. There's gonna have to be public outreach. And I also like that the realization here, although this is a 20 year plan, it's going to have to be updated regularly. There's a five every five year recommendation here. So um, I think it's an excellent job. I think there's a lot of things in there that people will look at. And I'll just give us one example of what, what is being proposed up at Valentine Road and, and Dow Ave in terms of traffic coming. That's 
been an issue for decades. And this is, you know, we'll see how the neighborhood reacts to it, but it's, it's, it, there's real thought going into this and you see it in other aspects of the plan in other areas, whether it's bikeway connection and, and recognition that you're working with the state and that you have to work with others. And, and the one last thing I wanna say, it's not a huge thing, but it has to do with bus travel. And, and one of the goals is to enhance the bus um, stop experience. And I think the best way to enhance the bus stop experience is not to have to wait too long for the bus. And I, you know that leads to other conversations that we're having with the 77 bus and, and not losing routes. But um, I, I wanna commend Ms. Ray and I wanna commend Mr. Amstutz for the, uh, for the outstanding work. Um, so, I, Mr. Chapter, I don't know if you want to add anything or... I, I mean, well-deserved piling on. I'd also thank Mr. Amstutz and Ms. Reed for the excellent work, uh, along with the entire committee for spending the better part of the last year and more putting together this plan. And, and thank you very much to the board for their consideration and comments tonight. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So, on a motion to endorse by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, hey, item number 17, discussion, Arlington Housing Authority tenant member appointment. Um, I put this on, but I may turn to Attorney Heim. We're at a stage now where we have received the expressions of interest from individuals who would like to be appointed to the tenant member. So Attorney Heim, if you could just lay out the timetable, and I, I think what we're looking to discuss is to have this on our next agenda to select the individual. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As the board will recall, following the reforms to the tenant appointment process, this board now has the duty and responsibility and authority to appoint a, a member of a tenant organization or a tenant of the housing authority to serve <coughs> on the authority's uh, uh, chief body. Unfortunately, the way the timing of things worked out, uh, following the statutory timeline, applications to the town clerk from either tenant organizations or tenants directly, because they didn't have a tenant organization, a local tenant organization, were due on Friday. And um, it was a tight turnaround. I know that members of this board wanted to think about uh, having it on the agenda for this, uh, this meeting. Uh, however, on the positive side, our current uh, appointee, Ms. Padilla, is able to continue to serve until this appointment is made. So the short version is there's not a lot of very specific criteria or requirements in terms of who you appoint and what your process is. I basically have to be a registered voter and a resident of the uh, housing authority or uh, nominated by a local tenant organization. My understanding is that you received uh, eight total uh, letters of interest, either uh, someone nominated directly by a local tenant organization or a tenant of the housing authority who expressed interest in the position. Some of them submitted more detailed written statements. Some of them just basically filled out the form they were required to fill out and sent it to the clerk. What I would suggest is that you uh, schedule the actual appointment hearing for uh, your August meeting and that while it's certainly up to the board, you can uh, allow but not require written statements of interest so that you have some additional information since not everybody submitted one within the time frame to just say I want to be considered and allow for whatever presentation folks want to make within a reasonable time frame of course since there's eight folks who are interested. Um, also I would note that there's no reason that you have to if someone doesn't want to submit a written statement they just want to basically say I'm interested and I want to say my piece at the board meeting that's that's fine. And finally I am sensitive to the fact that I did discuss this with the chair a little bit that it's an August meeting and as I think Ms. Mahan has pointed out and a few other board members August is the best time to do everything. Um, it might be nice if the board allowed if anybody couldn't for some reason be here in person to send an agent or a representative to basically say a few comments on their behalf. That would be particularly appropriate, for example, for a local tenant organization who made a nomination. 
So I, I think the board has wide latitude to conduct an efficient process. You don't have to do anything specifically, uh, but if you want to have a lot of information and laid up, you could. Uh, or you could essentially just say, hey, if you want to submit statement of interest, please submit your written statement of your qualifications and interest uh, in advance of our meeting. It would have been hard to post them in time for this meeting, given the fact that the period closed on Friday. Um, and we welcome folks to come in and say a few words, and we'll make our decision. But obviously, I, I, I yield to the, defer to the superior judgment of the board. Great. Thank, thank you, Attorney Heim. Um, I'll turn to the board. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I, I think... Definitely would leave it to the chair, but I think the process um, that uh, you ha held the hearing last time um, when we appointed uh, Ms. Bedelia, I, I think that worked out well. Um, I'd like to, and I understand things are unfortunate and we missed the date and this, that, and the other, but just as we all have been, um, this has been up, the sooner we get this decision made and firm and depending on what happens, um, with appointments, we could possibly be turning around having to, to do another temporary appointment until next spring. So I, I would leave it to my colleagues in the chair, but um, if we could somehow mirror the process the chair outlined uh, previously so that when we meet in August, we can get all the information, and then if any, the chair can dictate what goes from there. Okay. And, okay. Um, Mr. Hellman. Uh, that sounds to me. Okay, and I, and I just want to clarify on, so we have the names of the individuals, and, and before I turn to Mr. Diggins and Mr. Hurd, I just want to clarify your comments, Mrs. Mahan. Um, so we can ask for written statements between now and the 9th, and I think what Attorney Heim was saying, we can ask for that. We can have that as part of our agenda package for August 9th. We can have people come in just as we did with the, the last temporary appointment except it will just be the board, it won't be us and the Housing Authority. Um, we can do it that night on August 9th. Is that, you're comfortable with that time frame? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and just to the point of, if anybody wants to submit more, I, I just don't want to make work, more work for the select board office, um, I, where we just have two people in there and we're trying yeah. to, um, that, you know, obviously if anybody, no, I shouldn't say it that way, but I'm assuming <clears throat> the person or the persons who nominated will find out this information if they're not watching the meeting tonight and they can say if you want to send more but I think people sent in what they wanted to be considered okay no that's great and, and I think one of the concerns was the tenant organizations in a couple of cases just sent names in and that will give the individuals an opportunity but I think in other instances there were supplemental materials I haven't seen it but that's my understanding as far as what the form was okay um, Mr. Hurd yeah I'm fine with the time frame. I think what we did, I should remember since I was chair, but I think we took nominations and it, if someone was nominated, then they came up in front of the board for question and answers. Were you the chair? I'm, I apologize. So I, I, no, no, I, I apologize. That's fine. So I, I don't know, I don't remember if we, I don't think we actually had each individual come up and speak. It was just if they took a nomination, but I mean, it's within the chair's discretion. It's only eight people. Um, and I think August should be fine because in the, the Zoom world, mm -hmm. just like with emails now, you, you can never say you're away because you can Zoom in from anywhere. So, I, I mean, I think anyone that's interested should be able to take a little time out that night to, to uh, jump on the meeting if, if they do get called upon. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I do recall that we did allow uh, all of the... Uh, the applicants to, to speak, and I think it was three minutes to be on. Uh, and, and so, but I, I'm fine with this, you know, I'm just thinking maybe we'll want to start our meeting at six o'clock that night, but anyways, whatever. <laughs> okay, th thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, I, and I would, I, I might as well throw it out as my, I would be inclined to have everybody who has their name in to be given an opportunity to speak on the ninth if they so choose, and same thing on the on the written materials, but and I think we can work with the clerk's office to notify the eight individuals that this is our plan for August 9th and to invite them to send more materials in if they so choose. Um, okay, so on, uh, let me just say, I didn't, I'm usually writing down my motions. No, we didn't really make one yet. We did. 
Well, I thought, did Mr. Helmuth make a motion? Did you? I didn't. I said it sounded good to me. That's <laughs> okay. Right. I did. Well, that's why I that's why I didn't write it down. So if anybody is interested in making a motion, I will. Th well, actually, we, we asked if the chair could oversee the process. And, yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah. Be happy to. Yeah. yeah. If you need a motion for that, uh, so moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. Good yeah, it makes me feel better. I can <laughs> check off a couple things here. So on a motion <laughs> by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. I'll always vote on the motion to make the chair feel better. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hellman. Good plan. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourse. Yeah, I feel better. Yes. <laughs> if I said that, I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. I didn't write it down, so <laughs> there, there wasn't anything, but I was second guessing myself there. Okay, that ends item 17. Item 18, discussion for the Board of Assessors interim appointment. Um, we received a memo from Attorney Heim, and I'm going to turn it over to him for the, that time frame as well, and we can talk about dates. I'll keep it very brief, Mr. Chair. There's not a window by which you have to have it done. It's more that the process has been, you've been notified. Um, the board essentially, the select board basically convenes a joint meeting with the Board of Assessors. Uh, there's no requirements other than uh, a registered voter of the town. Uh, we've unfortunately had to do this a couple of times in the last couple of years. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But I would just propose at the next most convenient meeting to the select board and the uh, board of assessors, uh, we engage in the process of unfortunately having to fill uh, Mr. Feely's uh, seat. Okay. And, and I just want to add before I turn it over to members of the board, I did reach out to Mr. Greeley inquiring about his availability and, and um, Ms. O'Connor's availability um, to see if we could do this on August 9th. Unfortunately, that they have a conflict on August 9th. Um, I would like to, to see if we can maybe get the interim appointment made before Labor Day. And so two dates that they proposed was August 11th or August 16th. So if we did something on August 11th, that would be a special meeting really just for that purpose unless something else came up over the following Monday. What was this, 11th? Uh, 11th or 16th of August. Yeah, and, and again, the, the, the 9th is not, a, it's not a good night. So um, what I can do is, if members have any comments, I'll, I'll start with Mr. Diggins. Um, the, the 16th, I mean, I'm, I'm booked out on the 11th. Right, yeah. booked out on the 11th? Yes, yeah. okay. so the 16th will work for me. Okay, um, anybody else? With... Um, I could do the 16th, it was presumably it's an evening, which it would be, so. Yeah, and, and we can and start and a little early. I, I, I don't think, well, I think that would be the only thing we'd be doing. So I can do either, but on either I'll be joining okay. Mr. Diggins. Okay. On the screen. <laughs> Okay. Away. That'll be fun too. Okay. Mrs. Mahan, is the 16th okay? The 16th's fine. A little bit early is fine. That's the only agenda item unless the chairman deems there's something else that definitely needs to go on. And if you could, um, when you're talking to our colleagues on the Board of Assessors, um, where it's just one, if it's just one agenda item, well, I'll talk to you about that, about okay. who can, who's going to zoom. Of course, people have to zoom in well, so. Okay. All right. Okay. So on this one, I, I, I will add a meeting date for the 16th with that as the agenda item. Uh, Attorney Hine? Uh, so the only thing I just want to make sure is, and I'll make sure to contact the select board's office, is that it just has to be posted a week in advance. That's the only real uh, special requirement. Right. Thank right. you. And, and we will put out a request. I know we have received one written request. That written request will be deemed received. If the, the individual doesn't have to resubmit that, we will... Um, confirm that that has been received. So in this one, I think it was more of a discussion item. I don't think we need a vote, and uh, we know we have a plan. So I, <laughs> unless people have any, unless people want to vote, I will move on to item 19. Good okay. job, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. Thank you. Item 19 is a discussion of the proposed timeline for requesting expressions of interest for marijuana license and all alcohol license. Attorney Heim. Mr. Chair, I'm going to try to be lightning quick here. Uh, this is basically just building on a discussion last week. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't get this timeline uh, in the packet earlier. But essentially, uh, based on the board's feedback and based on consulting with some of the 
some of the stakeholders that are involved with hearing these different types of applications for licenses or host community agreements. I'm proposing that we would essentially open up solicitations for uh, a package store license on August 1st and close the period on August 27th so that you could hold a hearing on the package store license applications at your September 13th, 2021 meeting if we receive any. And none of these deadlines, if, if, if the board wanted to expand them or compress them, I think, I personally don't think that that's a huge problem. Uh, host community agreements, open the uh, host community agreement application process on September 15th, close it on October 15th, and hold a hearing on the last remaining uh, retail HCA at one of your November meetings, whichever one is more convenient for you. I don't think you have one scheduled right now. And then finally, um, I just would come back to the board at your August 9th meeting with a little bit more information about the delivery only and have the aim of opening that process up in at the earliest October um, and then potentially having hearings on those host community agreements in November or December at the board's discretion. So I just wanted to run this general outline, a timeline by the board trying to incorporate the feedback that you folks had given me in the last meeting and talking a little bit to um, a few of the departments that uh, process these host community agreements and stuff like that. I'm not deeply wedded to any of these things. If I've got anything wrong, please let me know in terms of the timelines. Okay, thank you, Attorney Heim. I uh, will turn to the board. Mr. Hurd. Motion to approve timelines for all uh, the remaining all alcohol license and the remaining community host agreement as outlined in Attorney Heim's memorandum. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'll second that and um, I'm just say two things on the um, remaining all alcohol. Is that what it is? Whatever it is. Package. All alcohol. I'm sorry. It's package, sir. My fault. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all alcohol. Is that yeah, what yeah, you call yeah. it? Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I guess depending on the number of the applicants, um, but even more so towards um, the HCA for the marijuana delivery, uh, marijuana cannabis, whatever. Um, I think all of us have learned in past history. <clears throat> First off, I think you, you, uh, the applicants should get it done in 30 minutes because I found when we've done an hour for them to present, we come back with like another hour of questions of things we really wanted flushed out. So, um, so we got their hour, no disrespect, fluff and stuff. And waiting, you know, for, you, I'm, I don't mean to be fresh. I'm no, just, no, no, no. Like, and then we did not really touching on the things we wanted to. So um, I'll leave it to the chair, but I think especially on HTA's 30 minute presentation, knowing that this board reads everything and we're going to spend at least that much time. And then um, if it's going to be on a regular agen agenda, either do no more than two a night because I'm thinking of the poor people that have to wait around. Or maybe you want to think of just a dedicated night. Right. Um, and then whatever comes in with the all alcohol. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of interest because we did allow the last applicant um, businesses that first came in that we said no to two rounds. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'll leave it to you in terms of um, how you structure that. And, uh, but again, I don't think, you know, more than whatever. You, I'll talk to you off. Okay. Off all right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you. No comments. Mr. Diggins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have to say, I mean, I do agree about the, you know, the, the 30 minute or last meeting. If, if, if we have the presentation, I mean, we really don't need to hear it again. That, that's my opinion on that. So, I mean, as little as possible with our presentations so we can delve, delve into the questions. And my question, though, is, that, is for the, um, the, 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 the ACA. Um, are, is the marijuana study group going to get fired up again for, for that process? Sorry, Attorney Hein. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Y yes, Mr. Dickens, we would make sure that the marijuana study group received the applications and was able to make recommendations, or it's not recommendations, they make post questions to the select board for your consideration, um, as the police department does, as my office does. Uh, we basically have that built in time so that they have time to convene look over the applications, provide any input or feedback as they did last time. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah. And I also support these, these time frames and, and 
um, we can talk offline, but I, I would be more inclined to, to do it as the only thing we do that night because we've run into situations both of the other two times we, we went really late. And um, one piece of good news is if we do this in November, we won't have a 90 degree day like we did for the other two li <laughs> no, license I hearings for the, for the marijuana licenses. So on a um, motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. I mean, if anybody wants to consider limiting it to like 10 minutes, I'd be, I'd be, good, I'd be good with that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hurd. In my defense, I think I gave him 20 minutes. <laughs> just 11 at night, so it felt longer. Uh, yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Helmet. Remedy is a soul of wit, so I'm all for that. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item 20, evaluation, um, town manager evaluation. And so for those in the public with our agenda package, there is a composite evaluation that... Uh, Ms. Malloy had prepared based on our individual evaluations of Mr. Chapter Lane. Um, this is a process that was a, for a longer period than, than um, usual. It, it, usually we've, the board has done it through either the end of February or as of March 1st. This evaluation was done through June 30th to allow Mr. Helmuth <coughs> to comment. Mr. Diggins had a longer period that he was on the board. And what we see here is there are a number of categories that we were asked to evaluate the town manager on. There's eight categories and a ninth category that has our overall score. Ms. Malloy compiled that. Um, five would be a perfect score, the highest um, that can be achieved. Mr. Chapter only received a five on professionalism. Every other category was over 4.5. This is a scale of one to five. The um, evaluations were all excellent. We appreciate the excellent job that Mr. Chapdelaine has done for the town. There's a number of comments that were put in here. Um, really just a testament to, to his hard work for the town and, and the professional job that he has done during this period and really throughout his whole tenure as town manager here in Arlington. Um, and I do want to open it up to, to, to um, board members for any, for any comments, but um, you know, certainly this, this type of evaluation shows how much we value the services that you've provided to the community and that we're happy that you're still here and uh, that uh, we'd, we'd like to really like to continue working with you. So um, I will open it up to the board um, and I'll start with Mrs. Mahan. <laughs> Don't you want to set up with a happy? Oh, okay. Um, well, actually, again, uh, I, I, I've done this, I think, with it. No, I haven't done this with every town manager. There was one that rhymes with okay. Harrington uh, that I didn't do it with. But, um, and I will, uh, I've kind of done it a little bit before, but we'll do it again where um, instead of belaboring my points and um, and things I'd like to talk about. I, I like doing that with the manager one-on-one. -on -one. Um, <clears throat> I do know um, my overall score, because I, I take it, and God bless Karen Malloy, it's just for my phone company days, I do it in increments of 0.25, and, and then add them all up and divide, and I came out to 4.38. Um, so um, I'm excited that you're staying here, uh, having stopped you so many times. Um, I, I will say that um, uh, one of the things that um, Ms. Malloy spoke in here about, and, and you also, um, your strengths were highlighted around that area. I do feel, um, uh, especially with the uh, Arlington Police Department, a very professional agency, um, a lot of things stemming, and to me just maybe a handful and one individuals um, that, uh, I'm, I'm, I wasn't satisfied with how that um, worked out, and I'd like to see that worked on more. I think I've made it clear tonight about um, budget and pending override, um, and I'm just going to say two other not-so-great things, because um, you can read all my high scores on everything else in there. I, I hold Adam in high esteem. Um, I think I know I'm the select board member that's worked with him the longest, and he's still here and wants to stay here. God bless you. But um, it, it, 
I'm, I'm really kind of getting frustrated. Um, and I'm not, I'm just saying for myself, especially when, you know, I hear from uh, the chairman and the chairman of, of the finance committee, and then I talk to our town unions um, <coughs> and, and say what's coming up, as well as my husband, that, you know, I know we're only offering the town unions a 1% which I think is insulting, uh, especially with the federal money coming in. But then we're told, well, you know, we got this override. But then I don't see it on the town side in terms of, I know just in the past month, I, I believe we're going from uh, under Christine Bongiorno, four full-time and four part-time to eight full-time and four part-time. And each, each one of those full-times is about 200,000. So if you, if you, and then we have two more full time being added to planning. So that's eight. And, and if you, the cost of each of those employees is a little bit over, those one employees, a little bit over 200,000 because we're bringing on benefits. Um, do we really need that? I know Governor Baker hasn't been uh, doing a very good job or any job at all. We sort of blocked out local boards of health in terms of COVID and, and issues like that. Um, and that's where, I, you know, the t I talk to our town employees and they say, we're told there's no money, we, we have, they didn't get to work from home or, or school from home or babysit from home. They worked all throughout COVID and we all said, oh, they're great, they're our first responders. Um, and I'll have further conversations with you about that because I see those, I mean, I've, I've been in and out of town hall. Like I said, the select board, we're not filling a full and a part-time position. At some point we may have to look at that but I'm looking at the workload coming in, and that really ticks me off. And then, then the only other thing is, I know we're not gonna do it at the meeting here tonight, and I have had conversations first with the manager, several, and with um, the chair. Um, you know, the last time you try to get away, <laughs> we did everything we could to keep you. One was a housing allowance, you know, plus other things so you could be here and reside in Arlington. And since that's not the case now any longer, I don't know that we need to have contract negotiations. Maybe it's something the manager can do voluntary. But I, when I sit down and talk with him, and then I'll follow up with the chair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. This is certainly a timely time for us to do evaluations as we almost lost you again, as Mrs. Mahan said. But we are certainly glad that you are staying. We're glad to have you here. The numbers don't lie. The, I mean, I can't imagine any town manager in this town anywhere that gets numbers these high from five members of a governing body. And if you read through here, I think my only negative comments that I put on the evaluation form were you work too hard. <laughs> we try to get you to, you know, delegate and that's something that you certainly worked on and we, we've been working for a couple of years to try to not just delegate but sort of alleviate some of the direct resident um, connections with you to keep you your head where it needs to be and you have some deputies that can be an interim that um, are gonna eventually handle some a lot of the requests anyways to take that off your plate. And I think that's something that we'll continue to work on. Um, but again, the numbers don't lie, the comments don't lie. We value your work, we value your expertise, and uh, we hope to have you stay here for a long, long time. And Mr. Chief, I know we are now in the, town man the last year of town manager's contract and sort of following up on what Mrs. Mahan I brought up, I'd, if appropriate, I would motion to, as a board, instruct the chair to continue to at least start the process of renegotiating the, the town manager's upcoming contract that, that will expire next year. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. That was a motion, Mr. Chair? That was a motion by Mr. Hurd. I'll second it, you know, and, and um, as far as my comments go, I mean, um, and, so, sorry about that. Sometimes my finger hovers over the, the, um, the keyboard, the mouse pad, you know, 
next. So that one makes me, mutes me out. Uh, so I told the, um, the, the town manager um, when uh, he was up for the gig and um, made it. He, I look forward to working with you wherever uh, because you are a really good person uh, with which to work. And, and, and we, we talk every week and, and uh, your knowledge and your uh, your authentic nature uh, is, 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 is just valuable to me, not only as a town manager, but as a person. And, uh, and so uh, I am, yeah, I, I, my, only, uh, my only criticism too was maybe the uh, inability to delegate. I don't really see that so much as a, a personal flaw, I mean, as much as it is maybe a situational um, um, issue where you just weren't able to maybe delegate more. But you know, it's easy to say that, you know, uh, when you're not in the chair. It, uh, because I know I was in a job once where we needed to hire someone, but we needed to deliver data really fast. And it's like, it, I can't spend the time to, to train this person. If you want the data as fast as you're going to get it. And then it's like, I'd love to be able to have someone do this work, but I can't do that and then deliver the data. So it may be that our demands be are unreasonable. But I did have a question to whomever made this statement. Um, the criticism, this is on section four. Criticism in this area, this is on board support relations. Criticism in this area revolved around the need to support the board in the development of their own cohesive policy direction. I, I mean, what does that mean? It, uh, I, mean I, I mean, I understand every word individually, but when I put it all together, it's like, what does that mean? And so whoever wrote it need or implied that. You don't have to answer it now, but you know how to get in touch with me. I'm, I'm interested in what that's about. So um, other than that, you know, um, I'm looking forward to working with you more. Thank you. I, I can tell you unequivocally it was not me. I didn't write any comments on anything because this is a document that stays in history. And so I can guarantee you it wasn't me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Next. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate, uh, thank you, Mr. to the chair and to my colleagues for extending the window so that I would have an opportunity to participate in this. It's really important. Uh, I, I think, you know, when you have somebody who is exceptional as, as you are, Adam, I think that it's very easy for all of us to realize, to think, well, you know that, you know, and I think it's really important that the people who, who, to whom you report and to whom you, with whom you collaborate have the opportunity to really thoughtfully consider uh, the range of your skill and, and, and give you constructive feedback, whether that's positive or room for improvement. Um, so I'm glad that we did this and I'm glad I got to participate in this. And although I've only been on the board um, a short period of time, I've had the privilege of working with our town manager um, as in collaboration on many projects over the years, so that certainly helped inform um, a lot of a lot of my thinking. Another really good thing about this process is that it's structured and it goes through categories that to, to which we we expect and, and need excellence. And I think the remarkable thing about our town manager is just how good you are in all of them, and that is exceptionally rare. It is a really difficult job. You make decisions every day that someone's not going to be happy with. Sometimes you make decisions that a lot of people aren't happy with and you have to do it because you have to rely on your personal integrity and your uh, assuredness that you're acting you know, in your own heart for the best interests of the town. I believe that you do that and I appreciate that. I think that it's inevitable that people will disagree. That's healthy. Even amongst the board, that's our job is, is to represent the community um, but I think that when it comes to an evaluation, I don't think about policy disagreements. I think about your capabilities uh, for doing the job, your integrity, your professionalism, um, your skill. And to me, when I look at these and I really thought about these, um, it was impossible for me to do anything but give you the highest marks across the board in just, just about every category, uh, not you know, just because it is real. And, and I think that the other facts don't lie, that your colleagues in, in the Mass Municipal Association that uh, represent 351 towns in, in cities across the, the, the state uh, regard you as the best in the business. You wouldn't be the president if you weren't, and I, I think that we're very fortunate uh, to have you. 
I, I appreciate some of the constructive um, suggestions that others have mentioned about there's always room for growth. Um, and I know that you and I've talked and you've been impressed me with your own um, insight into, into areas where you think that you could be even better. Um, so I won't uh, reiterate those. Um, I would just close by something I, I did write in my evaluation that didn't make it into this, um, to the Zagat summary here. Um, and, and, and that is, I, I really am very grateful that you chose to stay with us. I think that every year that you are, Adam Chaplin is our top manager, is a really good year for Arlington. And I hope there are many more such good years. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And uh, I, I spoke at the beginning, Mr. Chapterlain, and, and you and I have spoken um, about the individual um, performance review, and we've talked through the year. And, and a couple things I do want to add, and you, when you see the composite, you see how your other members view different aspects. And, and one of the things that, that really struck me was the you know, the board support relations, because each one of us has a different mode of communicating with you. Some have regular times, others call when they can, others pop in, and the board support relations score was 4.76. So that's having to, to work with five different personalities outside of the meeting and you know, be available. And I can say for myself, and I'm one of the ones that I don't have like a regular time, I, I, I will call at you know, during business hours, but it, it's, it's rather unpredictable um, during the week. And, and if you're not available, you get right back to me. And I, and I think looking at the scores, um, that's been the case with everybody. And that's really impressive because we're, we're different personalities and we have different schedules, yet we've gotten to the same place there, um, roughly, um, on, on, on that aspect. And so just for the public overall, I may have said at the beginning, the overall average score was 4.76, um, which, which is outstanding. So I did want to uh, give you the floor if you wanted to, to say anything um, at, at, at this time. A absolutely. Um, I think two main things I, I want to say. One, I'm very thankful to all of you for the time you took to uh, give so much thought and attention to this. Uh, I think I've said every year, and I've meant it every year, that both hearing uh, positive feedback and praise um, is something I appreciate, right, as a human being. We all, we all, we all like positive reinforcement. Um, but the constructive criticism is also very helpful as well, right? I would always rather know where I stand with any one of you. I feel a lot like I'm not looking at Len enough, but, uh, um, uh, you know, I, I would always rather know where I stand with all of you individually or with all of you as a board, um, even if it is a point of criticism as opposed to not knowing it, because then at least it gives me a chance to work on it. So um, I appreciate this process. I appreciate that we've, we've uh, brought it to conclusion. Um, and yeah, thank you. I feel very gratified to have been here for the time I've been here and still be thought of in such uh, high esteem by all of you. So I, I really appreciate that. I think the second thing I would say is in light of um, the obvious in terms of my consideration of leaving a couple weeks back, um, I am just in so much thinking and talking with a lot of people and consideration and you know, both personal and professional analysis. And I, I'm very much sincerely very, very happy to be staying here uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, one big reason is this board and its support of me and the work that me and other department heads and other town staff do. Uh, but I also think you saw a highlight tonight of um, you know, one of, the, one of the many, but one of the big reasons that I'm excited to stay, and that's things like the sustainable transportation plan, right? We collectively, as a town, as a community, have so much good work ahead of us, really cutting edge, innovative work that has made Arlington a leader in the Commonwealth and will continue to maintain Arlington as a leader in the Commonwealth, and I'm really excited to roll up my sleeves and continue the work with all the folks in town to get this stuff done, so. Okay. Thank you. Great, great. To, that's, well, that's great to hear. I didn't know where you were going at first. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, good. Okay, so on a, um, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but on a motion by Mr. Hurd to authorize the chair to begin negotiations with Mr. Chaplain, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, uh, correspondence received. Item 21, traffic and pedestrian safety concerns on Eastern Avenue. Uh, Mr. Hellman? 
Uh, thank you. Yes, I've been working with uh, the um, resident uh, who submitted the letter, who's a resident of my neighborhood, and uh, she's outlined a process which she's, uh, I think, done a lot of really good background and worked with Mr. Amstutz to, to do some preliminary work, and he suggested actually a referral to tech from, this, from the select board, so this letter uh, we were hoping could, could serve as that vehicle, so I'd like to move a uh, referral to tech based on the concerns. Great. Thank you, Senator. Do we do we have a second? Second. Anybody have any comments? I won't go down the line on this one. I will just I will just say that is one of the best letters I've seen. That was a, a spectacular letter. Thank you, Ms. Trickle. Can I just be picky housekeeper? Can you just say move receipt and refer thank you. the letter to TAC? Yes, thank you. I move receipt and uh, we refer the letter to TAC. Okay. I'll be fast, Mr. Yeah. Corsi. I'm sorry? I'll, I can be really fast. I can be really fast. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so an motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Item 22, uh, lack of cleanliness on the streets in business districts um, from the uh, eight head chair, um, Mr. Sh well, we move receipt on both those. I, well, I just did the first one oh. because that was a referral. Oh, you want to do a second? Yeah. Well, if we, if we have, um, I think Mr. Chapterling wanted to talk to that. So it, the board can very much feel comfortable referring it to my office. Deputy Town Manager Jim Feeney's already been working closely with Angela on uh, developing a response to this in coordination with DPW. Uh, I think we have a sense of the areas of concern, uh, namely around trash receptacles on the weekends near the new parklets. Sort of it's a workflow change where people aren't throwing out their trash inside, they're throwing them to barrels outside that need to be picked up more frequently. So we're working on a solution to that as well as a couple targeted areas um, that Ms. Holzowski was concerned about. So I think we have it well in hand, um, but if the board wants to refer it to, to okay. me. Yeah, and I'll take a motion for a referral to Town Manager. Move receipt and referral. Second. Anybody with any comments? No? I would just okay, sure, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> I, so I serve as the representative on A-TED. I missed the last meeting when this letter, I think, was formulated. Um, but I certainly, look, I know Jim's been working on it and Tommy I'm just going to take care of this. I did, you know, I, I feel like I always say this, but my office is right in the center and, and so I walk in this area all the time. And there is issues with trash in you know I think there's issues that the town can work with they just anticipate there's, there's no lack of you know oversight or there's no issue in the town it's just it's a new way of living that people are outside and there's more trash out there but it's also an issue of personal responsibility I guess <laughs> we need maybe we need signage that says hey throw your stuff away don't throw it on the ground <laughs> it which sounds stupid but Maybe it's enough of an incentive to, because I, I actually go, I feel like I'm a little trash picker. I pick up all the trash and put it away as I walk through the center, and maybe other people could do that too. But, you know, I think there's this work that the town can do, and I think there's some work that some of the people that patronize Arlington Center can do too to, to work together to keep the center clean. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Any other comments from the board? All right. On a motion to receive and refer to the town manager made by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. yes. Mr. Helmut? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourse? Yes. yes. Name is both. Thank you. Okay, new business. Uh, Ms. Costa? No new business. Okay, Attorney Heim. One item. I want to let the board know that uh, the town filed suit against ITRON. I want to thank uh, mm. Mike Cunningham for some terrific work in pulling together that complaint. We'll keep the board posted. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Mr. Chapter 1. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Two matters. One, in regards to the Mugar property, uh, the board uh, is definitely recalls that it approved the strategy as outlined and drafted by Town Council for really stepping up our, our pursuit and enforcement of the Mugars and the cleanliness of the Mugar Woods and the health and safety of the Mugar Woods. Uh, that uh, really quickly started to work in that representatives from the uh, Mugar Enterprises were um, increasingly responsive to myself, the Chair, and Town Council. Um, Two weeks ago now, uh, myself, uh, along with the delegation led by Officer Kniff, went into the property with the representative from the Mugars and four cleaning companies to spec out. We were out there for an hour and a half, um, and then I had to come back to the office, and they stayed out there to really uh, get the lay of the land and see what a cleaning scope would look like. Um, 
the representative of the MUGARs then went out again last Thursday with two more companies along with Officer Kniff to get further pricing. Checked in with her today. She expects uh, that final quote uh, in the next day or so and then to be awarding a bid, so I should have more to report soon. Uh, but there's been a very positive trajectory with um, the level of attention the MUGARs have been paying to us and our concerns and seemingly a willingness to do some serious cleaning on the property. So, you know, not fingers crossed, but it seems to be on a positive trajectory. Uh, on a much, much lighter note, I just wanted to give the board uh, a positive heads up that uh, I know one of the main things I think several board members have asked me and residents keep asking me is, are we doing a beer garden again? Is there any way to do a beer garden again? And there is uh, a local South Shore brewery that's been working with the Arlington Historical Society for, to use potentially the Jason Russell House lawn for some short stint uh, through the fall and it could very likely be on the board's next agenda for consideration and approval. So I just wanted to give a quick heads up to the board. Yeah, that. Thank you. That's all Thank I Mr. Chair, Mr. Hill. Uh, no new business, but I just want to suggest that they do that before the Jason Russell House drills the geothermal wells yeah. the, on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, Mr. Diggins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so it's, it's interesting about the beer garden thing because I am announcing that a, I, I had mentioned that I was toying with the idea of doing the, uh, trying to get the town to put on a dance party and maybe a parade for, or um, a taste of Arlington. And I decided not to do that about a couple of weeks ago uh, because my concerns about the uh, Delta variant uh, was such that I just couldn't have, I just didn't have the confidence to be. Uh, that's required to build the level of energy for you to pursue something like that because I didn't want us to end up in some kind of a conflict where we had put a lot of energy into it and then he was pushing forward in a perhaps unwise manner. I am hoping that we get to October and wish that we had done that. And so, so I am supportive of the beer garden thing, but I am just letting you all know that I'm no longer toying with that idea. Uh, but something else I mentioned that I am moving forward with is uh, uh, um, uh, a meeting. Uh, it's going to be like a, a forum, brainstorming session, workshop. It, uh, uh, but it's essentially, I'm thinking of it as more like a full duplex open forum. Uh, and I'm doing that in conjunction with the See the, I'm sorry, it's getting around 11 o'clock and I'm beginning to lose it. With the, oh, the civic engagement um, task group. It's a new group formed by uh, Envision Arlington. And, and so I'm gonna do that on next Monday uh, at seven o'clock till 8.30, it's gonna be remote. But the point, the real reason I'm bringing this up to you all is that this is going to be a platform that any of you can use. As you know, the, we have to, uh, because of open meeting laws, no more than two of us can meet um, and do something with the public at the same time. And, and so it'll be open to any one of you or any two of you, and I'm hoping that the town council will allow me to act as tech support for any of you um, um, if you decide to take advantage of it. And so uh, we're kind of making it up. We just tried anything to get uh, more civic engagement. So. Um, that'll be next Monday night from 7 o'clock to 8.30. It'll be on a count calendar and go out in the mail. So that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Hurd. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and thank you for the moment of silence at the beginning of the meeting. I do want to just acknowledge, again, the really monumentous loss that the town of Arlington suffered with Mr. Feely a few weeks back, tragically and sudden. Um, he was a great servant to the town in many capacities and he will certainly be missed and it, there'll be a big hole for residents to fill in his absence, but I do want to acknowledge his loss again. Um, a few things, well, kind of, we have this theme, I, I think, of early fall that I, I talked to the town manager about and I don't know if it's a high goal, but I'm just saying it to really put myself to the fire, is we had talked about the possibility of, in lieu of ha where we have, generally we had this discussion about the fireworks on town night and then town day, and we can't have town day this year for obvious reasons, but there is, uh, my understanding, still a small cache of money in the budget that could be designated to a fireworks display on Saturday on the normal weekend of town, of when town day would be. And my idea 
what we'd have to do some fundraising, which I'll I'll uh, take the lead on. But my idea is sort of a patronized Arlington type theme, whereas especially if we had the beer garden, which this is news to me today, which I think works well into it, is if that was during the day, the, the idea is go to patronize a local Arlington restaurant business. We can reach out to Arlington businesses to have specials that night to try to incentivize people to come in and then enjoy the fireworks from wherever it is that you can you can uh, watch the fireworks. So. It, it's still in the works and it's in the preliminary stages. And by preliminary, I mean, I mentioned it to Adam a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so we'll see where we go from here. But I think that's just a good way to kind of to cap off the summer. And, you know, as we have new businesses in town and new restaurants that are opening, kind of have a specific day where we want residents to come in and uh, patronize our businesses. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, <clears throat> very briefly, um, uh, I think I mentioned this to you, but I, I can't recall, but uh, Robin's Farm has been um, befallen to some teenage young kids. They see it as pranks and letting off steam, and um, there's been some playground equipment and other things vandalized up there, and then the following week, the community gardens and the latch, the locks broken off, and things inside taken um, and they found the sea snee snakes or whatever it was a couple blocks away so I did um, send an email over the weekend to Adam and Jim Feeney and Chief Flaherty expecting that I talk about it on Monday about what's to be done but um, the Chief Flaherty um, along with the manager I, I got an email from Chief Flaherty and she'd already increased the patrols on Saturday night, and I'm, one of the things I'm going to continue my conversation with the town manager, and the reason why I included Jim Feeney is he did <clears throat> such a stellar job in terms of when we had to have ballot boxes out there and security and things like that. But I don't know that it needs to have that sort of a, a steps be put in place. So I'm, I figure if I give a week and then touch base um, with the town manager, who will already spoken with Julie what's been done may be enough. And then the other thing I spoke to the manager about, um, um, and I just wanted to let the board know as well as let, uh, and I know you're all aware of it, if anyone's been in Diagostino's in the past week, you've gotten it maybe. Um, uh, the proposal, Mass Ave and Appleton, losing parking. I also was contacted by, I was one business I was indirectly contacted by and um, the manager knew well of uh, Dr. I think it was Falzone or Fallon, Fallon. Fallon. sorry. Uh, but then also the um, husband and wife who own the cleaners, and I don't know if it's ABC or ACE, but it's in that block. I let my dad go in, she came running out very concerned about that, why are you gonna do that? And I told her I've already spoken to the town manager, also spoke to the town manager about um, any parent of an Audison school student who rides or takes the bus, as well as the two traffic supervisors we have to have there now, um, still can't understand the rationale for that bus stop getting moved further. So I, because <clears throat> it, it creates a great visual disturb, I mean, whatever it is, you don't have the queue, you don't have the distance, whereas in front of the bank, which that bank parking lot, I'll just say the bank parking lot's there, but I'm just. Uh, but he said he would look into that and uh, get back to the board. I think it's safer. I don't know where we're talking about other things with the T to put it back where it was, and then any loss of parking, it, it'll just be transferred over. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And I just have a couple brief things. I just want to follow up on Mr. Chapdelaine's um, comments on on Mugar, and, and I want to thank him for his efforts and, and really the whole team. The past couple of weeks because there we had a dialogue, uh, Attorney Heim, Mr. Chapterlain and I, but since then there's been a lot of activity um, between Officer Kniff, Mr. Chapterlain, a number of people going down to the site with the Mugar interest and things are moving along in a positive direction. We will keep um, keep on that, but that, that was good news that you received today. And I also wanted to also mention, I think all members of the board have probably received calls about the issues on Mass Ave and, and Appleton Street and the parking. And I think people were concerned that it was coming before us tonight for a vote. Before anything comes before us, there will be plenty of notice and, and um, 
plenty of opportunity to hear from people. So it's not something that's going to go on an agenda on a Friday for, for that Monday. So, um, and my understanding that we will not have anything before us on that until after Labor Day, maybe not even until October, but we will keep the public informed on that and continue to receive input. So with that, I will um, take a motion to adjourn. So moved with three minutes to spare. And second for anyone? <laughs> second. Okay. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Yes, of course. Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Nice. Good night, everybody.